Carry on. Ten minutes to complain about all these people in the chat, and we are recording. There we go. Welcome back to the Heroes World Let's podcast. Go. Semi-quarantined here in uh, uh, somewhere, somewhere out there, uh, depending on where you're looking. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. As you can see from my background, we are discussing today, uh, spoiler alert, the Fantastic Four. So I, of course, would like to welcome Andre and John, who are the owners and founders of Heroes World. Of course, our resident Lord of Mischief, Rob. <laughs> and we have two special guests today, two Fantastic Four super fans, both Pat and Scott. So say hello to everyone. Hi, everybody. Hi. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Of Thank course, you I... Us. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Of course, I'm your host, Stu. Uh, so today, we're going to go through four topics and each of us uh, are going to go uh, one by one to give our thoughts on it so our topics are fantastic for dreamcast so that is the first one number two like are we Dream making a second Shut up, Rob. yes dreamcast so sony, right. sony uh <laughs> is uh, gonna destroy us afterwards uh next <laughs> is gonna be soon. best fantastic four comic book storyline the third one is best alternative Fantastic Four member. And the last topic is best Fantastic Four moment. So again, I'll go through this. That's a quick uh, summary of our topics, but I'll go through it one more time. Uh, <laughs> the John factor. The John. The John <laughs> I didn't role, even ask. You know? go, <laughs> but you will. In, in, my, in my defense last time, I was just making sure the order was the same. And the time before that? <laughs> um, no comment. Uh, before that. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. So, so um, yeah, so we're, that, that's what we're going to go through. So uh, before we start, I want to thank again, everyone, for your continued support, watching, uh, following, posting, uh, liking, sharing. Uh, we appreciate uh, everyone's support on our uh, podcast, both uh, in video, on YouTube, and audio. So thanks, everyone. Uh, John and Rob are doing uh, a fun job on, on Instagram before our podcast as well. So follow both of them on socials and, uh, and you'll find out more about that near the end. And uh, yeah, so thank you everyone. Um, so our first topic is we've talked various times about Kevin Feige calling us and uh, yes, he has once again called us one more time, uh, had us on speed dial to, for this one is to, come up with a Fantastic Four uh, MCU movie. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of flexibility. Typically, when we pick any type of characters or, or one person, we remove them from the list and no one can pick them afterwards. Uh, this is a big, bigger cast because we are casting all four members of the Fantastic Four as well as Doctor Doom. So it would be really difficult to remove five people and then not have them as an option. <laughs> so today we're going to do things differently. If, if a, a, an actor... Especially to, if I pick Army Hammer. I, I thought about Army Hammer a long time. And I, I, it's, he, 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 he is on my, my number one choice for Hercules, but not uh, as a fantastic full member at this standpoint. Right. But yeah, so we're going to go through that. And then each person will have a chance to to uh, give their suggestion to the folks at Marvel. Or you could go as Pat uh, before the podcast went third off the rails and do weirdo <laughs> picks. Honestly, whatever you want. Uh, you, can, you can do whatever you want today. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure Anna Kendrick is on his list. So. We can't, we, he, he's, he's, can't say he's that crossing it off. anymore. She, it would, it would, to be fair, <laughs> she'd be greatest crystal. But let's, let's continue on in, in a different storyline. Um, so the order today uh, is... Surprise, I'm going first today. Then it is Rob. <laughs> rigged. Then John. Yeah, of course Double it's rigged, rigged. John. Rigged. Yeah, because we rig it every time for you to go first. <laughs> Scott. So randomizer every week. Scott. <laughs> Pat. And, and uh, finally, uh, uh, the cleanup is, is Andre. So, yeah, as, as people have noticed, typically we'll, we'll, we'll put up the lineups and, and, and we'll put the harder ones uh, for the people that are very knowledgeable at the end. Uh, but I figured, you know, I've been near the end for a lot. So I figure today it's going to be me going first. So your turn to shine. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's see what happens today. Uh, and I figured John uh, in the middle would be, I don't want him to be, give no answer, but I want him to squirm a bit. So the middle is perfect. It's just enough that you know, really be I got sweating. 
You don't have nothing. You got the answers I just sent you. <laughs> yeah. It was a trap. <laughs> Full disclosure, everybody sent me their picks before we started, so I'm cheating a little bit. I literally just did somebody else's homework. <laughs> I have faith in you, Scott. Uh, I have a complete faith that you're going to come up with some good stuff, so I'm not too concerned. I am concerned about John, so uh, uh, we'll go from there. Okay. <laughs> So uh, let's talk about uh, my casting. So I'm going to go on a serious Kevin Feige, listen to me. These four people are, or five are ideal. I think they're the, the, the most realistic cast I could come up with. This is not a, a John Tyrese joke one, because honestly, <laughs> Green Lantern, ridiculous. Um, so I am going with the 100% approval rating. Everyone agrees that he would be... Uh, an excellent You're going with choice the office combo, aren't you? For 100%. John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic and Emily Blunt as, as uh, Sue Storm. Oh, Andre doesn't approve. Two. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, everyone has their opinion. Uh, Andre doesn't like anyone in the MCU, so it's, it's fine. Um, <laughs> he wow. hates everyone, so it's good. Um, I don't know who thinks John Krasinski looks smart let alone could play a smart guy, but whoever, whoever, sorry. First oh, of all, Andre, I'm you- I'm sorry, Mr. Krasinski, his name is Andre. <laughs> so Andre, we all know that- uh, The dude looks like an idiot. Like, come on. He, he played a lovable goof in Office, yes. Wow. But he was a badass You're in a lot of other- the smartest guy in the crying. And anyway, sorry, sorry, so, I digress. So Andre, as we're all aware, just because you're part of Mensa it's doesn't mean that you're, you're a smart actor. Uh, <laughs> so, and, and also the writer writes the script, so you need the good writer. So let's, let's hope that the writer think, is someone who is I good. I think if you speak words good, then yeah. smart you can sound. And that's, yeah. uh, you know, LeVar Burton is a fantastic actor, but I really don't think he knows diddly squat about the main deflector dish. So it comes down to- yeah, but he also didn't- Or does he? <laughs> which was just dumb as hell. I'd rather oh, does he? Than, than, uh, than anything Kransky's with. But anyways- Like okay. truly, if that's the case, Ava what, Green should be- What about Johnny Depp smart as, role because as Mr. Fantastic? Wait, let Stu finish his picks. It's it's fine. I, I, John John's really just in 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 uh, back just against the, the wall. Stu just made the internet pick right now, so let him pick actually back against the wall. Um, it's, no, I, I, I've heard you've heard that pick all over the internet, yeah, and, and it, yeah, honestly, that that became my benchmark every time I pick yeah. somebody new. It's like, but is it better than Krasinski and Blunt? I don't he, know. Here's the thing: my, my Fantastic Four. I needed two kind of older actors because they're parents. Uh, I, I wanted to. I didn't. I didn't want to go the kid route where they were young people going to space, and and I don't need to go see them at MCU. Uh, as you can see in the background, I need them to be established so they can buy the fantastic, like, you know, build the bastard. Bas you want the building. You want the building in like, effect. I want, yeah. you know, I, I need people that are, are have their own type of, of, of gravitas that can hang with the Avengers. Anyone too young, they're going to be like, who are you kids? Like, this is not going to work. So I needed someone with the gravitas that could move into an MCU movie, be able to really go in and, 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 and uh, hang with, with T'Challa and hang with other members of, of the MCU. So I needed two type of older actors, also whom that shown in, in, in various, yeah, various opportunities. I, I think Trudinsky with a beard is what I'm looking at, but yeah. Uh, looking for actors who also could, could age in the point when you could have two young children and they were, you know, uh, very, able to pull off some humor and pull off some action and, and Emily Blunt is is fantastic. She's good in everything she does and and although John isn't isn't a band of John Trzinski, I think that he can do the role and, and what? I love father. <laughs> Andre, you met Andre, right? Andre. So yeah. So I love John Trzinski. So I think that those are the consensus picks. Uh, I think the next three are gonna be a little bit different than what people expect, but let me go into the next couple Whoa. of picks. So for Johnny Storm is kind of an interesting thing. Um, typically you want to pick the person that looks like the character, but I, I, I wanted to pick someone a lot younger who, who is capable of, because in my mind, someone who is, has a relationship with Spider-Man, someone of that same age group and ilk that they could, you know, come of the best storylines in Fantastic Four, the two of them hanging up. So I picked a, a much younger 24 year old-ish uh, human torch. So someone, uh, is is um, different. So I picked uh, Noel Centineo. So he is he's a he was cast as He Man, which I don't think is actually going to happen anymore. But he was uh, into all the boys I loved before. So he's this kind of younger, 
bigger actor. Uh, he can pull off some of the, 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 the uh, I guess, the womanizing factor and kind of be charming at the same time that you want from, from, from Johnny. He, you know, also is kind of a little bit of a goofball. So it, it kind of fits that dynamic. And again, I'm looking for someone that has that fingers crossed Tom Holland relationship for, for years to come. So uh, someone who is a little bit junior. Who, what, what's he from? Like To all the boys I loved oh. before. Uh, so he's also in The Perfect Date. and he's Never seen of, it. John, at, <laughs> uh, as your girls get older, you're going to see all these rom-coms on, on Netflix eventually, and he's in all of them. So he, he's in... in the, oh, you know what? So, yeah, okay, I do have a picture of this guy. So he's on a bunch of the Netflix uh, rom-coms. So he's, he's kind of a character that... Yeah, that's the guy. So he's kind of the guy that is, is kind of a goofy... Uh, character and he was deemed the internet's boyfriend a few years ago so i think he was the right the right fit uh, uh Ma- damn it they told me i had a shot at that <laughs> <laughs> no sorry there, there's always 2021 20, scott don't worry about it this is 2028 20, 20, nobody's year <laughs> yeah uh then the, the so ben Grimm was kind of a, a difficult thing for me too Trzynski, yes uh <laughs> Trzynski and, and blunt are both kind of run the th- late for like Trzinski's 40 and we both like 37 ish so I needed to pick a, a, a guy who was kind of in their age as well because again if, if you have guys that went to school together you want the same age that was also my biggest gripe with that fantastic four movie with Michael Chiklis look older way older than everyone else and I'm like how are you guys <laughs> go to school together he just he like, just didn't age well That's yeah all. he just really the, the <laughs> thing suit didn't age well so I, I was definitely like, the best thing about those movies yeah so I, I went with with David Arbor. I think uh, he is uh, he was he's in the new uh, Black Widow film. He was in Hellboy, Hellboy and he was in Stranger Things. He he has that type of humor, uh, the voice that goes with it. Um, I think he would he would match very well with Trzinski and kind of their back and forth uh, relationship. But that that's the guy that I, I figured would be the right fit. And he's done CGI and all that stuff and. He's fine. He could do it. So I, I think that would be the right choice. And, and for the most important casting, Whoa. because Doom is up the every most movie. important every movie. character. He's the one that you really need someone with gravitas, someone who can truly act, someone can do, has experience, someone who can really carry this forward. Um, and I don't think Andre is gonna gonna like this at all. But I think he got the raw deal and and several movies but i think oscar isaac is the guy he he is truly a gifted actor he got screwed over in in uh, age of apocalypse because he was like i get to hang and just wore this ugly mask he's like screw it i don't care anymore uh, <laughs> it's pretty bad pretty bad but uh, and ex- excluding poe dameron oscar isaac's a really oh. good actor um he's gonna have a, a little bit of fun in in the dune movie for you know you know for this dune movie but I, I think that he can put the gravitas of someone who has a lot of loss. And, uh, and, and watching him in, in other films outside of the comic movies, he's, he's, he's tremendous. Um, and also nominated for Academy Awards. So he, he can do stuff. So that, that is um, my choices for uh, a Dream Fantastic Four uh, movie in the MCU. So I am complete. So there we go, Rob. It is up wow. to you. Um, okay, so it's funny. Army <laughs> well, it's funny how you actually went through and, and did it based on ages. Age. Um, that uh, seems to be almost like is the age and then building it out from the actors there. I yep. actually went the same way, but I, I really thought That's long solid. and I shut up. I thought long and hard about <laughs> this in that, in that I really don't know how you put the Fantastic Four in today's modern world and i think that they work best when they're set in the 60s the age of the space race um i you know you can bring them in for but i think you need to uh, that foundation Ooh. has to be from the 60s mm-hmm. and i think the reason being is that the 60s it's were about the space good, race. Rob. the 60s were about the space race you needed and i needed a squeaky clean family because you had the astronauts that were going up but if nasa were like we're going to send a family up to space because this is a world, uh, you know, the time of the world expos and we are going to be sending, you know, families into space. You need to have a bit of a younger family, right? Representing. So people at home could be watching this young family going up to space. So mm. I chose a little bit younger 
and I know everybody's going to get, you know, be busting my chops on this. I actually did pick Army Hammer as <laughs> yeah. Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and, and right? I should just keep a picture of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Rob, and, Rob, and I'll hold, on, yeah. hold on, hold on, Rob. Can, can you show us on your arm your Army Hammer uh, tattoo? Like, are you? No. Guys, what's going on? <laughs> no. <laughs> Th Look, that this guy, guy glows. I can't even get a good picture. <laughs> no, this guy has got, and I'll tell you, wait till I, I round out the rest of the cast and you'll understand why. You need somebody. Army Hammer plays really, has that squeaky clean look. Remember I saw Man from Uncle? He does the 1960s slash 70s look really well, right? Okay. So I think he's perfect for that, to in, in, embody that younger, and he's 30 in real life. He's like 33 or 34. So I think he's right at that perfect age because you want somebody who's going to be at least for three movies. You don't want somebody who's going to be much older, right? For Sue Storm, Vanessa Kirby from uh, The Crown, right? She played yep. um, uh, Princess Margaret and also from the Mission Impossible movies and the uh, Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs so and Shaw. She's yes. also young. You put her right next to Army Hammer, they make a great, uh, a great pair, a great couple. They, again, they're that younger couple that's going up to space. Tour de force in Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, <laughs> Ready for Johnny Storm? I had to go younger, right? I had to go younger, and I had to pick somebody who was not the typical that we've seen, you know, Wolf Finghart or any of those other people we've mentioned before. I went with an actor named Aiden Gallagher. And if you don't know who Aiden Gallagher is, he was he played uh, number five in The Umbrella Academy. Yes, and I'm, yes. I'm going to tell you, this kid, and the only reason I know who, who realized who this guy was is my kids are big fans of Ricky, Nikki, Dicky, and Don or whatever on Netflix. And this kid was in realized until I'm watching the Umbrella Academy. Man, this guy brought some serious acting chops to Umbrella Academy. He was awesome. I think he would play a great Johnny Storm uh, because he's younger. He could be the younger brother of Vanessa Kirby. So I've got Aiden Gallagher. Ben Grimm uh, slash The Thing was really tough for me. I, admittedly, I wanted to go Patton Oswalt. So I thought, oh, he'll bring <laughs> a little bit of funny and humor. <laughs> But I needed somebody who could be a bit more older than, than Army and Vanessa and be, it could be that pilot, that 1960s Buzz Aldrin pilot, Ben Foster. Ben Foster. <laughs> Shut up, John. <laughs> ben Foster. I'm helping you. I'm helping. <laughs> ben Foster as, as, um, as the thing. Man, that guy has got some, uh, some serious acting behind him, right? Uh, you know, uh, To Hell or High Water. Um, a whole bunch of other movies, right? He was great. I mean, I know he was Angel in that really bad X3, but Ben Foster's got that really intense grab. It's going to be CGI anyways, right? But he will, as Ben Grimm, he will definitely what? You're look. not going to use the suit like the original <laughs> yeah. movies? He'll definitely look it. And then Dr. Doom, I wanted to go a little bit different. I know that I'm going to be kind of breaking the mold. Is it Army Hander? Doom's Is it Army Hammer again? <laughs> yeah. Supposed Big to be loss. Big loss. Big loss. Big loss. No. No, I, I'm, I'm doing away with the Latveria portion right now because I don't want him to be grounded in Latveria. I'm going Denzel Washington because this guy in training day was vicious and angry wow. and would be a real threat to the Fantastic Four. So I'm going Denzel Washington as Dr. Doom because he's also an incredibly smart scientist. So that's my wow. dream cast. Army Hammer, Vanessa wow. Kirby, Aiden Gallagher, Ben Foster, Denzel Washington. My man. Wow. What? Uh, like, uh, nobody. I thought you guys. No, you're right. Wow, it just it's unbelievable. Like, it truly is a, a fantastic casting. So uh, wow. I got issues All with right. the last one. I got issues. Why? With why? Why? Issues. No, no. That, that's uh, no. Go ahead, Andre. A couple of things. Um, so one of the things about Doctor Doom, right, is that he has to be a uh, he has to be a monarch. He has to be powerful. He has to be stately. He has to be smart, and he has to have a, a, a an attachment to the supernatural. Taking, Denzel can do all of those. Uh, Denzel yeah. is all of these things. No, you're right. However, you've just pick, picked a black man. So what part of Europe are you going to make this black man a statesman of? You can't do Africa because it's Wakanda. And it, whatever black magic you're going to do, it's got to be voodoo. And none of that works for doom. No, no. But I said he's not grounded in Latveria. That's why I said I'm going a you're different direction. Right. This is not he said somebody. He's not grounded in Latveria, except that's the goddamn core of doom. So you've missed the well, whole point of the character. That's like saying, I'm going to make Magneto and not make him a Jew in Auschwitz. If you've missed the point. 
if you you okay. then, if you're gonna redo the whole thing, you got to redo the whole thing. But Doom has to have all of those elements, and it's not like you can say Denzel is from Detroit and that's his state. He's gonna take that over. And you can say, oh, he's from a Caribbean island, but then that doesn't have magic. That has voodoo. So you got to make sure you keep the core of the dude. I love Denzel. He's one of my favorite actors. And sure, he could play the shit out of that part, but you've got to rewrite the whole thing for it to be considered Dr. Doom. Sorry. That's they, which, they, which they might be able to do because they screwed him up so bad in the last three movies. It, that wasn't even Dr. Doom in any of those movies, so it's fine. You could, anything you do it was, for it was, is, is... Yeah, you know, see, it was pretty watch. ridiculous. So that you could... You, you could go totally off book. But then what part what parts of Doom are you keeping then? If you just keep that he's a smart, uh, uh, smart according smart, to the last three movies, then only his mask. Off, of course. Then he's yeah. the leader. Then he's everybody else. He's not Doom. But right. but that's why John everyone hated those last movies because it wasn't a representation of Doom. So I then why yeah. would you... about this? I actually don't think they should have put Doom in any of those movies. Yeah, I, 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 would, I wish I had a picture of Doom Indians. on the yeah. surfboard. Well, right now. no, and the only reason we had to add Doom is because Stu said it was a doc. We had to throw Doctor Doom fan casting in. So. You, you you do have to throw Doom because Doom is important um, as a character because he's the driving force between him and Reed as as an NYU. Like they're the driving force that push each other to get to the upper limits of of uh, is the reason why they went to space. So like the, the, he he's a character. He doesn't have to be Doom in it, but. He has to be somewhere in this because he is one of the main factors. You could rewrite it where he's Doom is like Elon Musk and he's like pushing this private space travel to, to, to space. And that's the reason. But he is a, a guiding factor to the Fantastic Four. So you, you can't have one without the other. Uh, yeah. So I, I get what you're doing, Rob. It is, it is truly going, going for the gusto. But I think your idea of uh, Elseworld in the 70s is already something completely different anyway. So... I think that's gonna genius. Be a whole that is different. genius. I'll give it to you, Rob. If you're going to do something different, you might as well do like, <laughs> you know, this is one of those weird, not the 616 universes, but you might as well go somewhere else. Or, or maybe, maybe it's like the Mandarin. Maybe he calls himself Doom and the real Doom's pissed off that he's calling himself Dr. Doom. So, yeah, yeah it's, it was... They were, uh, they were such well, a Silver Age team there. that it's, it's, it's a great idea to set them in the era where they were the most successful. That's, I'd yeah. watch a period piece. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that, that is that would... so now we get to John, now that Rob is now uh <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> Shell shocks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, go for it. Okay. Um who do you guys want to hear first? Do you want to hear my four pronged assault in oh, getting God. Wolverine <laughs> into the MCU and I actually cast the new Fantastic Four, not the regular Fantastic Four? No, um, don't don't, follow the rules. Follow the rules <laughs> okay, no. Fine. All right. Can I have Christopher Reeve as uh, Mr. Fantastic? You can do whatever you, you want. Dreamcast. You dreamcast. Okay, you can do no. whatever you want. Okay, so you can do Mr. Fantastic. John is going to cast himself have... as the thing. He's going to be an uh, oh, unknown man, actor, awesome. John Ho, as the thing. I, it's all CGI, okay. anyways. Yeah. He, yeah, it's all CGI. He's like, I just want to. He's going to cast Vin Diesel. He's like, who do I want to hang out with on set? It's like, A, Vin Diesel. Two, the Rock as Sue Storm. Three. Okay. Yeah. I just, just seriously get out of here. All right. So John. Yo, what's King wrong with John Hamm? As Mr. Fantastic. I I like him as Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. If I get my first choice. Uh, my secondary choice was Norm Macdonald, but you know, I'm sure you guys don't want to hear that now. Um, <laughs> the, the singer? The singer? No, the that's, comedian. That's, no, <laughs> that's Michael McDonald. <laughs> Yacht Rock. Yeah. Okay, and as. Uh, invisible Woman. Uh, I really like this actress. Um, a lot of you probably never heard of her. Her name is Rosamund Pike. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah we've all heard of her. The first, the first. <laughs> yeah, she was hey, in a Shaw movie to, called uh, Gone Girl. <laughs> I know her from Jack Reacher. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I cast her. Shout outs to uh, Stephanie who sent a good uh, suggestion i cheated actually i posted this on instagram last night when all you guys were sleeping and and got uh got suggestions but she she suggested jennifer lawrence which i was like hey, that, would, that would be pretty cool but my first choice was rosamund pike um johnny storm uh i actually choose uh zach efron that's, that's people's <laughs> and people's choice actually, online yep 100 percent. that's it was actually yeah online. it was actually suggested to me twice by other people a lot of uh, my secondary him, choice yeah. was, St was Stephen amill but, uh, he was fun in Ninja Turtles. Um, and 
who else do I need? Oh, Thing. Thing. Uh, Thing, Thing I actually picked John Cena because I think he would be hilarious and have a lot of fun. And he's a big guy, so they could rubber suit him up if he wanted. Um, but he's pretty... <laughs> Jack, what, yeah. What's wrong with the rubber suit? The rubber suit actually looks okay in the second movie. So John Cena, I think he deserves a chance. I think he's got some. Uh, I legitimately some and I, I, think I you want to do that. <laughs> you picked him too. <laughs> wow! I, would, I didn't tell you. Yeah, I, I was going to pick something wrestling related. <laughs> well, know, there's still Batista. Batista. Batista's still up for grabs. Uh, uh, you can rock, you can yeah. still pick John Cena. Don't worry about it. But yeah, yeah, go for it. We can uh, discuss bonus you know points for the fact that you cast an actor with blue eyes. Yeah, I know. I, I was like, like huh? John Cena thing. Surprisingly so, so you can actually like have his eyes. Yeah, come on, John Cena. He's good. He's going to be. You just save the special effects department millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah, boom. <laughs> to be fair, I, I, he looked to be the best uh, whole piece in that Fast and the Furious trailer. He he was the best thing in that entire trailer outside of spoiler Han. I was I was excited to see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that 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 Fantastic Four like that again. Fast and Furious movie with John Cena. I I'm so sad that I have to wait a year to watch it. That looked incredible. But yes, carry on. Okay, um, is that everybody? No, no, Doctor uh, Doom. Okay, do I? What about She Hulk and Wolverine and uh, no, Hulk no, and no. Ghost Rider? No. Do I cast those guys? No. All right, fine. I had choices for them. Um, Doctor Doom. Uh, I got a wicked suggestion. I, and, I love how you can't go wrong. So with... underprepared, but yet you plan for Wolverine, She Hulk, and Ghost Rider. How I'm not. This... What, why would you? Would you <laughs> how think was this even so, a thing? So Doctor Doom. I'm about to welcome Doctor Doom. Big thanks to Rob. Not not Rob Gaudet. Rob Koo. and I've put Henry Cavill as Doctor Doom, Superman himself as Doctor Doom. How was that not perfect? Well, you couldn't we, see we his mustache, so you'd be all right. There's no CGI. I, 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 Rob, mustache. I can do this for you. I think the mustache like. makes it. I can do this. <laughs> there we go. That's the mustache. Ready to go. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't see it, so there's no CGI money for that. So way to go, John. Whew. Wow. Um, okay, I'm just trying to... That's my fan four. It's a blockbuster. And when, you, when I throw in Wolverine, that's my four-pronged assault. Okay, I think we got us all. I think we're all speechless. I think we're truly all <laughs> speechless. All right. Uh, what, wow. Where, where are you setting this? Modern day. Uh, I, I I like a more modern cut. So everybody's already established, um, yeah. and and you do some fun. Like the 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 new movie had some cool ideas where they kind of introduced the military aspect and things like that. But they just really that whole thing fell apart after like ten minutes. So I think that you could give it a slightly modern twist, but I, I, I really like that. You told yeah. us before we were recording that your favorite version of Fantastic Four was the Roger Corman one. So I don't understand why you're going this <laughs> Get way. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't understand why you're, why you're, because that you said was your favorite. I'm surprised you're not actually aping that. I'm surprised, but hey. I cannot go, I Fabricate. cannot visit his Heroes World without John Ho trying to sell me one of those bootleg VHS tapes. Carmen movie. I'm like, come on, man. Like, we've moved along, you know? This, 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 this is unbelievable what's happening. He actually right now. lent me. Rob has just made up something and it's fantastic. turning into reality. <laughs> no, but he <laughs> lent me the Fantastic Four movie, the one with Alba. I put it in and I was like, what is this? <laughs> And he was like, ah, the better one. I, you know, I'm doing you a service. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm no surprised, John, you went this way. He's subversive right. that way when it comes to properties that he really, really loves. Like, yeah. I, I think he was a backer uh, of the project from the way oh. he, uh, he always get out of here. Kickstarter. <laughs> this is, yeah. this is. Yeah. So if those of you who are wondering why, why uh, Rob is as known as the trickster, this is it. Uh, at no point did, did uh, this happen, but he's just willing this into reality. <laughs> or are we so, live fact checking this as we go? Uh, okay. <laughs> if it didn't happen on picture or tape, it didn't happen. So uh, yeah. All right. Gina Carretto is She-Hulk. Oh, oh, shut up. Up. Come on. Ring. All right. Luke John. Regno is Hulk. <laughs> Charlie Hunnan as Ghost Rider. Just FYI. Oh, Wait, who was your Wolverine? Just how's your Wolverine, John? It was Zac Efron. Oh, the, oh okay. Wow. <laughs> From like three weeks ago, you still you're still on Zac Efron. No, I, 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 and also notice I doubled him up. <laughs> yes, you did. Play George. <laughs> you double, I did notice that, double John. Double duty. Double duty. I didn't duty. want to call you out on it, but I'm like, this is. And you should just leave duty. Chris Evans as Human Torch. I did it on purpose. He's not coming back as Human Torch. 
All right. Uh, wow. We're going to, I thought John, John was going to go with the Seth Rogen as a Wolverine. So, you know, this is, <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> all right. Scott, perfect here you go, buddy. Uh, now is your time to be pushed in the pool. You have your chance to uh, name your dream. Fantastic four slash Dr. Do. Well, I don't know um, how you can how you can follow that. So my apologies. Well, it's interesting. We we actually have a little bit of a an overlap. overlap. Um, I it, everybody was trying to pick by age, and I found that that was the biggest hurdle was trying to get people. You know, you start to build your cast, and you're like, well, but if Reed and Ben went to school together, then yep. they. So there's a point at which I was just like, yeah, actors' ages versus character ages. We all know that they suck at that. So let's just turn into the skid here and enjoy it. So um, you can de-age them, Gemini Man, right? <laughs> Gemini Man style. We get a little, get a little uh, yeah. digital magic in there, and, but the technology is there. Um, for my for my read, I figured uh, had to look smart. Had to look like he uh, maybe had a rough time in high school. Um, needed somebody else's protection. Was that? But he, Reed was definitely stuffed into a locker at some point in his life. Um, I John went with Oak. Sam Sam Huntingwood. Hey, yeah. I went with Sam Huntingwood, Sam Huntingwood. Uh, oh. from Fanboys, among mm -hmm. a bajillion other projects. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I thought he could. He looks pliable, <laughs> and in a way that you know would lend himself to, <laughs> to be uh, stretchified uh, in the movies. Um, my Sue Storm, I is Sue, I Sam Huntington or Hunting Wood. Hunt is it Hunting? Is it Hunting Tin or I think it's Hunting Wood. Hunting, hunting right? Wood. Did I say Hunting Tin? Hunting Wood. Yeah. You said Only, Hunting you know, Wood. Less, less. Uh, wood. Went to the mall, took a glamour photo than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, for my my Sue Storm, uh, she's got to be. Uh, She's got to be tough. Uh, she's got to be um, the glue that holds everybody together. Um, and this one, I feel like this is kind of predictable or uninspired, but I like it. I, I want to see Kristen Bell be Sue Storm. Wow. Hey. Think, yeah. Is that on your list, Pat? No? <laughs> yeah. My actors are all <laughs> people I like. <laughs> you know that. I don't watch movies with people I don't like them in them. You don't like Chris, Kristen Bell? That's I love a, Kristen Bell. Oh, Kristen Bell. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was almost a dangerous hot take. The internet was gonna come after you. You were gonna yeah, get hit yeah, by yeah. nine year old if girls anyone, like you wouldn't have believed. If anyone didn't like Kristen Bell, it'd be over. Yeah. We'd be um why yeah. I mean come on. Very very right there, right? Yeah. That's what I'm and saying. There, yeah. Including the hair. Oh. There you go. They're pretty close to the same age. Uh, they they kind of work. Um, mm -hmm. I thought I thought it was a good pairing. Um, for I ended up having to take a slightly older actor than she is for her brother, but uh, luckily he plays young jackass like uh, nobody else. Oh, no, John, I'm going. I'm going Zach Efron. Um, yeah, my guy. I kept <laughs> while I was searching. My guy. It was, yeah. I kept going, I need a Zac Efron type. I need a Zac Efron type. And I finally did that thing that you always hear about in Hollywood where somebody goes, well, why don't you just get Zac Efron? <laughs> that, yeah. that look right there, that is, that is Johnny Torch or Johnny Storm. That is, yeah. that is the human torch yeah. attitude. Um, Personified. Jackassery. Yeah. 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 I feel like we're oh, going to have go. a, look at that. A oh, boom, special effects are Flame on. I feel like we're going to have an Army Hammer versus Zac Efron battle show <laughs> in the future episode here because John's dropping Zac like crazy. Um, and uh, for the thing, I went with uh, this guy, unfortunately, is a little bit older than I'd like him to be, but I'm hoping that we can lose that in just, boy, he got really grizzled when he went off and served in the Army for a while or what, the Air Force or wherever the hell he learned to fly. Um, <laughs> And I went with Dominic Purcell, plays Rory on oh, Legends of Tomorrow. Ooh, Prison Break. I thought, yeah, Prison Break. Legend, yeah. He's got that real gravelly voice, and he always uh, is very unimpressed with things going on around him. I thought that could translate really well into that character. Um, the advantage being that most of that movie becomes special effects anyway, so once he converts. And I feel like it's a real Mike Chiklis-influenced decision, but 
rubber suit. Come on, guys. I mean, checklist. <laughs> checklist was the best part of those original movies, and that's exactly. I, yeah, exactly. And so I don't know how you you can't <laughs> shake that uh, going into this one. The problem is though, is that with that is that they never let Chickless. You he should have just been his character. He wasn't a shield. If he was the character, on the <laughs> Big shield, Mackie has the, the thing. A, yes, then that would have been perfect. But instead, they watered him down. Well, the world wasn't those ready original for, movies. Yeah, I mean, it, th that was one of those things where you saw the movie, you're like, okay, I feel like this wasn't for me. I feel like this was Marvel wanted to, you know, get the younger kids, and. Yeah. I think the struggle with turning the Fantastic Four into a film is that, um, in, in a real life movie, is that uh, as soon as Reed stretches, there's nothing that looks more cartoonish than that. And as soon as you have somebody who immediately starts stretching out like a rubber band or forming into a ball, it's, it's the, the definition of physics defying humor that we've seen in every comic book from when we were kids. And, and, and every cartoon, every Looney Tunes thing is, is built around people defying physics with their body. So it just, I think it takes you out of the moment a lot. I, I, I really, I love the Fantastic Four. I struggle with how you make it look like a real movie. Mm -hmm. But anyway, until you until you moment. watch Incredibles one and two, and then that's you're like, a that's, cartoon. That's, that's how you make it. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Yeah. Come on, right. all right. It's very it's Scott. The step to live action. All right, uh, and Doctor Doom. Doom. Uh, Richard Madden. Uh, you last saw him as Rob Stark in Game of Thrones. Ooh. I think there's. Uh, he's going to be in the Eternals soon, so that you get to watch him ah, okay. shortly. <laughs> well, he's he's got. I think he's got. He's got a good look. He's got a good, yeah. uh, you know, European-ish look, being from Europe and all. Yeah, no, he's he's great. Yeah. Um, you know, he can bring the gravitas and then the accent. Mm, that's a handsome doom. That's a handsome look down at uh, Reed yeah. with yeah. disdain at Richards. So um, those those are my five. Great, great, good job. Thank you, uh, Pat. It is, it is your turn, and well, now I mean, you. Yep. We said fan cast, so it doesn't necessarily need to make sense. Does not, as, <laughs> uh, as Rob has shown us, it does not need to make sense. Wait, mine makes sense. I <laughs> like it. I actually really liked his idea. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. It makes too much sense, actually. Yeah. Um, but for me, outside like, of Doom, yes, everything but Doom makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's always just been actors I liked. Um, so I actually was real. I actually really liked Chris the idea of Christian Bell as an Invisible Woman Sue Storm. Uh, if it wasn't an Emily Blunt, right? Um, she has that look, right? She she and and I think she can play like a a, a motherly role, mm -hmm. right? She also has yeah. She was in really good in a lot of the shows I've seen her in. So that's my personal choice. Um, for the thing, I was always gonna pick a wrestler. It was always going to be John Cena or The Rock, because I figured it was all going to be CGI anyways. <laughs> yeah, or at not least Batista? It was only going to be no, not Batista. I don't think oh. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Batista's funny enough. It would it would have been always The Rock or a John Cena type that can do kind of the humor roles, the one liners, throw a bunch of run liners, punch a couple of things. Um, that kind I of. I think John Cena could do it. I think so too. I think so too. But it would be some type of wrestler with like this the the, the structure that you can build around with CGI. Um, Who's your Mr. Fantastic? Mr. Fantastic. Oh, you want to do it that way? I was oh, no, sorry. You, you, yeah, you just... I was just, I, jump, I was just jumping around going oh. down my, my list. Um, but for Mr. Fantastic, I don't know. Like, personally, I, I was good. I like George Clooney. He's a little older, <laughs> but I just really like George Clooney. I think he has that look. He, yeah, has yeah. A, he has a Mr. Fantastic look. Whether or not he can play the part, that's like, you, like we were saying before. That's for is, the right is, is he your favorite Batman? Yes, he is. There you go, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> that was Stu's. That's Stu's favorite Batman, not mine. <laughs> Fabrication. <laughs> the lies Clooney. begin. The lies say begin. He was good as Batman. Hang on, no, say what you will about Clooney's Batman, but but Clooney was a good Bruce Wayne. The stuff mm. when with with Alfred when he's sick and Clooney standing at the door and looking at him that that carries heavier than. Most of the other stuff. The rest of that movie is a disaster. But let's the not other forget, stuff, he like played a doctor. Girlfriend. Yeah, but he played a doctor for nine seasons, and he filmed Batman forever, or Batman and Robin in the middle of playing ER. So I don't think it was nine seasons. In a doorway, being really upset about somebody dying, it was pretty natural for him. But so you're Stu, saying that he should have been able to fix him on his own? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? I actually like. I actually like casting, especially. I like Pat's casting, especially if you think about. We're not done uh, yet. Clooney. Let him 
No, but hang on. But Clooney as the uh, during his Ocean's Eleven, like he was so suave, right? Like he would make a good read. Um, and George Clooney was five seasons, not not nine. <laughs> I, I just want to. I just want to fact check you, Rob. You're just Let's making up facts, <laughs> making up stuff. But yeah, right. sorry, Pat. Go for it. Um, and for a Human Torch, I actually kind of wanted to see Justin Timberlake as a Human Torch. <laughs> <laughs> well, his career is burning out, so I guess it makes sense. I don't know. Why not? Why oh, not? In the woods. I saw. Oh, okay. I was, you know, I, that idea came because my dad was watching um, that movie where he played your like, NSYNC videos. No. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking no. through your NSYNC no, CDs movie, and was like, "What are the these here? Where, Fuck that!" The movie where he had the time on his wrist. Well, oh, people, oh yeah, yeah, to, yeah. What was that? I forgot what I forgot the movie was called, and I'm like, man, he was kind of good. Oh, was was kinda, yeah, he was good Hold at it. He was okay in it. I didn't hate it. I didn't. You know hate that for a quick second, I thought you said Justin Bieber, and I was like, what? Okay, no, but I, I, all right. Did you see the Timberlake from the early 2000s, where it already looked like his hair was on fire all the time? Oh, that was bad. <laughs> that was a good call. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I actually didn't know, or maybe jo- I didn't have I didn't have a Doctor Doom pick ahead of time. I told you, you whoever it was, it'd be somebody <laughs> British. It'd be like a D- it would be like a super aged, like somebody with an accent, because I believe he needs to be like Eastern. Europe, Jason like Statham. Eastern European. No, has to be look smart. Uh, oh, like no, Patrick Stewart. Someone, someone suggested Luke Evans. Have a Luke Evans. Gaston. Oh. Or, or, or one of the Shaw brothers from Fast and the Furious. Yeah. Yeah, it would have to be somebody British, like a D, or maybe like an aged Eddie Redmayne or something. I don't know. Actually, yeah. do you know? Do you guys ever watch the original Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the the Swedish version? The guy who played Michael um, Jannon or whatever the uh, the author's name was, he was also the bad guy in John Wick. Oh, do you remember that guy? <laughs> what are you doing? I was making it into. You can tell that John's prepared for pictures. Some of them he has them. Some of them, like I'll just do it on my phone. It's the, the inconsistency of John. Uh, hey, I'm not. I was. I, you told them to send me pictures. No one sent pictures. So I'm trying my best here. Oh God. Uh, I. I. Um. Uh, somebody British. Somebody yeah, who can smart. do. Somebody who can do like Michael Nick magic. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, 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 it, it, it totally makes sense. I think he's I think, a master of all accents, right? There's something about uh, when a British person says gobbledygook, it sounds right. Whether it's whether it's 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 <laughs> starship goop. technology in Star Trek. When Scotty <laughs> starts talking about dilithium crystals, you're like, whatever. The nanofolds, and you're like, that makes sense. Sure, somebody whatever who, you want. And, and somebody who's like dashingly handsome, because they need to be handsome, because otherwise, like, they won't have that. Doom factor, right? So Henry Cavill, is what you're saying. You could you could do that too, as John. Yeah, like as long as somebody like if you're not pretty or if you're not handsome, you won't feel like you, you won't get scarred, right? Like your base, yeah. That that's so, what I would say. So uh, do you want to go older, Pat, or younger? I don't know. Ages fluctuate here because it's all supposed to be just you know, it's just characters, it's just actors I liked. So but Pat, in theory, uh, all three of them should be the same age, right? I need I need you to make a decision. Is it Cena or The Rock? Because The Rock is a thing is a fantastic. Uh, segue to to do the things. rock, the rock. <laughs> <laughs> a better segue. Go. Uh, and he won't, then, he won't allow himself to be hurt or anything. He's invincible in every movie he is. Yeah, it's the Which thing is perfect. invincible. He doesn't lose in anything unless the Hulk shows up. Oh, he mean, takes thing takes his beatings. It's, it's, sure, sure, but he he often wins. But let's carry on. And then your your Doctor Doom, uh, just for synergy, would it be would somebody it be? somebody European. Somebody, somebody, a little, some, some. That a down. European. <laughs> so can, can we just some European? Jason Statham. No. No. Uh, let's 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 let's, let's, let's go, go with let's go Superman. Henry Cavill. So they can you sure. can do the Shazam slash Superman thing before. It also happens. in Man from Uncle, it ties in with Raw. Sure. Yes. <laughs> yes. How worried right. should we be that Andre's being this quiet right now? Andre's he's getting ready. Old. Andre did his homework. Like he yeah. sent me a picture. Up Andre, he, he, he sent me a picture. Wait till you see the picture he sent me. All right, it's Andre. All like... <laughs> Go for it, buddy. It's up to you. Let all me right. know when you want the picture up, Andre. Yeah, okay. Denzel Washington. So, so I actually am looking forward into having these characters in the MCU. I'm taking, uh, taking into account that it's 2020. 
and this movie isn't coming out to 2021, 2022, whatever, right? So I'm creating the Fantastic Four in an MCU that should be and reflect the world. So uh, I'm going to cue uh, John to uh, put up the picture here. And this is my cast of the Fantastic Four. And they are 20 somethings and they're going to grow with the MCU. And it's going Look at this guy. This guy, this guy put together a photo this is, montage. This is oh, wow. Here we go. <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh, wow. Look at you, Andre. All right. So first up, we got the thing and he's Elar Coltrane. You might know him from his nomination from Boyhood. Mm -hmm. First of all, this guy looks like Ben Grimm. So before he turns into the thing, he's got that covered. It's going to be CG. The storms are going to be Asian. So we've got Arden Cho as uh, Sue Storm. And Johnny Storm is played by Justin A. Davis. Look at that. That's Johnny Storm right there. Now, you're going to ask, why are they the Storms? Well, maybe they changed their last name or whatever to make it easier to pronounce. But I think right now in the MCU, if you're recreating characters, we do not need a ton more of just your simple Caucasian heroes all over the place. You're creating these guys today. So it's got to be diversity and uh, we need some change. So next up for Mr. Fantastic. The Hang smart on, where, where, do we, where do we know those two from? Uh, give me... Give me oh, the IMD. Arden, Arden Cho was in uh, Teen Wolf, um, and uh, Vincent was in a movie I've never seen it called Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Um, but uh, yeah, TV these guys show, right? have some roles. They're all yeah. twenty something, so I figure they can be cast multiple times going forward, uh, and 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 play these roles. Uh, but Justin A. Davis, look him up. He's had a lot of roles from Boardwalk Empire. He's done some action stuff, uh, and look at him. He just he's just a smart looking dude. It's coming from New York, like we know Mr. Fantastic. So I think it'd be really cool to, to uh, have um, uh, some people of different races. Now, I didn't want to do like the Fox movie where, was it, uh, who played uh, J um, Johnny Storm in that? Uh, Michael movie? B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan, right? It's too easy to cast the black guy as the, the athlete or whatever. I want, I want him as, as Reed Richard. Uh, so I tried to get, uh, you know, people that I think a look like the core of what those characters are. I don't think race really matters to them as long as they look to the core. Uh, so now the hardest casting for me was Doom because, again, I was trying to think of age and how do you get these people uh, read, especially uh, thing. So it's not quite going to work. Uh, but there was a guy in Vikings who I really thought could uh, have the look and he's a Russian actor so it's kind of close he's going to sound like doom uh, and it's uh I'm going to pronounce it wrong Danila Kozowski uh but yeah he looked great in that and I think he's got that kind of look like you guys said he's got to be ruggedly handsome uh he's got to look like he's got gravitas he's got to look like he's kind of like royalty and arrogant and stuff and it's going to be tragic when something happens for him to be scarred, and that's going to be, I would put that at the hands of, of Reed Richards. So how do I get these folks into the MCU? Quite simply, we go back to Avengers 1 when the Chitauri strike, and that just happens to be when that Fantastic Four ship launches. Somehow they get skewed with Cosmo into that portal. So now they're somewhere that portal has given them the cosmic radiation. Now they land in the negative zone, right? So I don't need doom right away, but I've got a nihilist, right? And who do they run into fighting the, 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 uh, the annihilation wave? They run into the Shi'ar empire and who's helping out the Shi'ar empire? Anybody? Anybody? Army hammer. <laughs> Is it this guy? This guy, right? No, it's not that guy. No, it's, it's From Vikings TV. D A N I L A Kozlovsky. Anyways, so they run into the Shi'ar, and the X Men are there. So I'm getting both of these guys into the MCU now. Hold on, Stu. This is a bloat. I just want. I just. I don't need the X Men. I want one of the other. Where is the X Men fan cast? No, 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 no. Going on. I'll let you finish, but yeah. Yar, send them back 
to Earth to get help against the annihilation wave. And that's how we get the FF back. And they're saying, hey, we've got to go help the X-Men out there because they've been fighting this thing the whole time. That's why they haven't been on Earth. So you get to get the you get to get the X Men shoehorned in, and how and what is the connective tissue? What is the connective tissue? Do you remember Scott? Do you remember Fantastic Four two fifty eight? Off the top of my head, no. <laughs> remember this one issue? All right, I think it, it was existed. I think yes, two fifty eight, where the Fantastic Four find the body of Jean Grey under under. Uh, uh, under the ocean she's in the cocoon and they're sent to get that because they need the host for the phoenix to stop the annihilation wave but who can revive who can revive the phoenix they don't know how you remember that scott go to doom this and uh, that's it okay so first off andre i want to say that oh maybe it's 285 let me check and see what it is <laughs> anyway, so okay <laughs> we, we jump over andre first i want to say that's outside of the x-men thing that's the coolest idea i've heard flying through that portal in the negative zone you had me at that point and coming back. I know the, the X-Men thing, it, it's a lot in a movie. This is like John's romantic comedy, X-Men <laughs> Wolverine trilogy. That now contains like, a Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> so, so now it's like, oh, one movie, then there's a next movie. Like, this is the problem that you hated with Iron Man. It's like too many points, too many, uh, too many uh, integrations. I, I love that the fact that it's glued into the Char Chari portal, but I don't need any X-Men. I don't need to know. Right. I, just, I want them there, right. and I need to bounce. But here's the thing: you, you're, we're never going to get the X Men as we know it by starting them. Where do you start the X Men? But this is a discussion for another podcast. Deadpool. Well, the but reason yes. I was saying that <laughs> it's just they're going to just mention them. They're not going to like run in and they'll be beside them. Do you remember in? Um, I think it was X Men Two when we saw that origin scene of of Wolverine popping out of the yeah. the, the port the 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 tube. Yeah. It's just going to be a scene like that. Just says, "Hey, we ran into Professor X and 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 these people, and we need to go get Jean Grey." And then you go back. I, maybe it was two sixty eight. I'm going to find that Fantastic Four cover and show you because that was one <laughs> of the greatest things when they brought Jean Grey back and they launched the X Factor book. They did it through the Fantastic Four and one and, and an Avengers issue, and it was a Chris Claremont thing. Uh, but yeah, it was it was really cool. So again, you need to have these these uh, characters. Um, <laughs> Random issue numbers. <laughs> well, I mean, it was it was it was under the John Byrne run, so that makes sense. But like, I don't remember the exact number. Go. Yeah, two eighty six. I I I I really like yeah. your uh I um uh, your idea, Andre. I think it 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 fits perfectly with the MCU. Yeah. Um, I I I the only thing that I I consider is that. How do you line them up to have the money it takes to buy and, and do what they need to do in in in, in New York? But uh, yeah, what are, what are you talking about? They got to buy the Baxter Building. They got a bunch of stuff they got to do. They won't have the Baxter Building so because they, they they launched into space when they were like 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 you said. It yeah. could have been that that yeah. the storms are like Elon Musk and they're launching SpaceX yeah. and they just yeah. happen to have yeah. you know. Yeah. And when they come space back, Tesla, yeah, you know, whatever you know, yeah. it's it it could be. Uh, it could be. I'm gonna find a picture of that other guy. Okay. Well, I, I think I think it'd be really neat if it, you you go with that thing where they get launched into the portal, but the time tr passes differently yeah. then, so they get spat out now, and so they come back to a world full of heroes with well, powers that's of their own. Yeah. They'll be coming back after whatever point. So wh how how long is Avengers one to Infinity? Like how long is, is that in time? Like that's got to be ten years of the MCU because five years pass. Five it's years like, after the snap. Five so, years passed after the snap. So there had to have been five years before the snap. So they're coming back at least 10 years after Avengers 1, right? Yeah. No, yeah, I, well, it, to be fair, it is canon that time in the negative universe is does. Different, yeah. It's different. But I think the negative universe works in the reverse where it fast forwards them in age. Because in Hickman's run, when, spoiler alert, Human Torch comes back, he's like, oh, you no aged a lot. So <laughs> he, he, he's older. So it's the reverse. Unless you flip the switch because technically time in the negative zone, it fast forwards you. So, because when Johnny came back, he looked more mature, but anyway, they, the, they do that a lot though. Valeria came back older too. A couple of like in a couple. Yeah. Couple so it, it, you, you have to reverse the streams, Andre, because right now in the negative zone fast forwards you because the other one they already did where 
Well, when, maybe when they don't end Ant up in Man the was in, they end up somewhere else just in space and they're fighting somebody. Because right? Ant-Man was already in a universe where time was slowed, right? And, and they set that in the canon. So he was in the, 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 the Micronauts universe where things got slower. So that's how it works. Anyways, I digress. So we're going to jump on to topics because, again, wow, that was a long one. So uh, we're going to jump to our best Fantastic Four comic book storyline. So as I am first, uh, I will start <laughs> us off. Uh, so that was great segue as always, Andre, which is why you're, you're the last guy. Um, so mine is, uh, storyline is my favorite of all of it. So it's... Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four run. It's the epic of all epics. It, you can't pick the whole run. No, no, no. It is. It is. <laughs> no, but I, I'm just giving some caveat. Okay. He, he did a lot of issues, but mine specifically I was looking for was issues 583 to 588. It is uh, the three storyline where, spoiler alert, uh, you know, Human Torch sacrifices himself in to save the children of the future foundation. And it starts this whole reverberation of what happens when the Fantastic Four are turned to the Fantastic Three. So it is one of the Again. best. Yes. So <laughs> Hickman does such a wonderful job in that five episodes of, or of comics of weaving in such yes. the rich tapestry it. of the Fantastic Four, whether it's Namor, the, the, me. the Inhumans, uh, the Celestials, Galactus, Silver Surfer, Doctor Doom. Like he, he managed to put everyone in together. And I think the one thing he does really well um, in that, that arc at the end, and if you haven't read it, it's fantastic, is, you know, Ben Grimm is in the situation where he, you know, is always stuck as the thing. The children give him an opportunity to revert back to human, but only for a limited time. He has, you know, that, that little couple pages where he kind of just chills in New York and hangs out with all these people that you know, Avengers and watches a football game and stuff and, and Human Torch kind of is, is awesome. And to the point when near the end when they're being attacked by Annihilus in the negative wave, Annihilation wave, he, Human Torch sacrifices himself. And in that last run of 588, um, where they kind of do the aftermath, a lot of the comic is actually has no dialogue. So it, it kind of shows how people deal, deal with loss differently, um, including when, when Franklin has that really touching conversation with spider-man so there's a lot of really cool nuance with it um it, it works really well uh unfortunately you know uh, human torch didn't you know came back pretty much within like less than two years but that whole little arc where then even even when mr fantastic when johnny was fooling around because most people know him as just the lovable goofy brother who just does dumb things sits down with him and and there's a whole reason why he, he makes that sacrifice to say, you know, you got to grow up. We have kids here. You have to make decisions. It's not the same as what it was before. So that's, uh, gives some, you know, human torch does a lot of things, but it gave him an opportunity to really shine and, and step out of his zone and, and really grow up and to become a mature, uh, hero. So that's my pick, uh, for, for that trade. Uh, you can pick it up. Uh, it, it's a fantastic yeah. read. They have, they have like a double omnibus, I think. So volume one and volume two. They have Vol like a, I, I come in ultimate collection or something like that. I, I, it's volume two, but that, that arc is, is uh, by far my favorite. And, and uh, Hickman did what uh, Jeff Johns did with uh, Flash and kind of refreshed and, and, and brought new life to all the, the Fantastic Four. Uh, is that the end of his run? Is, was, was he done? No, was because he, he has one more run. Oh, he, did the, he did the Future Foundation after? Okay. He did Future Foundation, and then he did one more run from 600 to like 611 or 615. And then that is another huge epic run. Um, but and that might be someone else's stuff, so I won't go into it. But that, that, that other thing is and the, the, the Hickman final 600 run is also amazing. But my pick is, is just the, the Human Torch really just stepping up when when they need hey, hey comic or moment come on comic or comic moment. comic it's comic. a story line. yes it's, come it's on five. all right so what if that's okay. someone's moment well i'm first so it doesn't matter it could be my moment <laughs> later on you, you <laughs> can so, pick it again <laughs> someone there. all yeah, right so I feel like they Rob, kind of blend in though your favorite comic or moment like my, one specific panel no because a moment we're going to go into if you've watched the, or listened to the podcast we'll, we'll go into it momentarily but uh let's just mm -hmm. continue on with storyline rob it's up to you. Rob, no so, Hickman run. So I was saying, he can do yeah. Hickman. He can do the exactly. beginning Hickman, but yeah. you can do it every so, time. I'm intimidated by to this week's category because everybody kept telling me how great Scott and Pat's knowledge of 
fantastic. Book. <laughs> yeah, and and me and Rob probably have read the le- least. Yeah, Rob, like, like honestly, I don't have. I, I've read a few issues, uh, uh, picking up old graphic novels that I would read or some whatever when I was a kid. So the only thing I can really think of is that. A couple weeks ago, we talked about when we were talking. Uh, Hold on, Scott's mug was gigantic. Sorry to interrupt. I know, he's a big bubba. <laughs> and, a big and, bubba and mug. Scott, and, and Scott is a gigantic dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, so that means that, that is like, <laughs> that is like freaking this huge on me, probably. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, this, Rob. This is, I just, this is, I just a, this is a bubba. Like, it holds yeah, a yeah. liter of water. <laughs> and it makes it really difficult to get through a two-hour podcast. Because <laughs> yeah. I was like, hold on a second. Scott is huge. And that thing is huge. Oh, man. Okay, so we'll call that the Galactus mug. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Rob. That's okay. So a couple weeks ago, we talked about anyway, sometimes, sometimes storylines don't have to encompass multiple issues. Sometimes a storyline can be a single issue, right? We talked about uh, the Superman issue where it was just, he and Batman and, and Lois, and they went to the, the fair, right? So mm-hmm. I'm going back to an original storyline, um, uh, um, FF number 51, written by uh, Kirby, uh, Stanley and Jack Kirby, written and drawn, This Man, This Monster. Um, and I have very little recollection of it, because I remember we're kind of reading it in, a, in an old trade. Um, but essentially, it was that somebody, a, a rival of Reed Richards, uh, another scientist, breaks in, captures, and, and is able to replicate the powers and turns into the thing and yeah, he's ah, actually I, a random i looked at this exact issue rob so you're lucky i didn't go before you he's, <laughs> he's a random he's a random yeah. dude yeah that just has like a big forehead and just tricks thing into coming into his house and zaps him and takes his power and takes his powers but then by yeah. therefore reverting but, but the crazy, thing yeah. to human to be a human right so then mm-hmm. things like oh my god I, i'm i'm human again and he wants to propose to alicia Anyways, this is a dichotomy of where this evil scientist is now understanding the weight of having to be the thing and being a hero. And you have the thing, who's now Ben Grimm, who wants to be human, but he understands the responsibility that he needs to be the thing and, and what he brings to it. So I always, I've always been a fan of those, of those polar storylines where it's just a single issue. There's, there's something happening in it and it speaks, you know, um, greater to the characters and it actually builds upon that character it's not he the thing isn't just a mindless rock dude you know, running around there's actually somebody be, within that um that character so that's that's my probably my storyline the pick John. It's, it's crazy yeah he sacrifices himself at the end to save me rich like it's yeah it's, because he it's, realizes it's the importance of being a hero yeah yeah it's, yeah. it's crazy and then, and then ben grimm's like i wanted to wall up that guy and, and this different tactics like oh he paid the price or something and i was like this is crazy for back in the day well, I, I, okay. I think it's an it's an important part of of um superhero stories where it's an accident that causes your powers is at some point you have to get the opportunity to choose out and choose to stay because you need to have that heroic moment as part of your character. Yep, and not everyone can say the same Spider-Man line over and over, so you gotta diversify it somehow. Right. Uh, yeah, it's an, and it's an iconic cover. I was trying to pull it up, but- uh, Oh, here, I, I got it right here. Uh, yeah. Oh, the grading, is it a grading? Yeah, he, he's like- Oh, no. <laughs> we thought you were gonna have a copy of it. Yeah, <laughs> we're like, like, really really guys, fan guys, fan, guys it's only a, a 9.7, <laughs> guys, but you know- It cost me 15,000, but don't worry about it. I was at Pixitani for the weekend, and I picked up it. This guy named Phil sold it to me. It's gotta be here somewhere. Wait, it's under my Fantastic Four number one. Here it's, it's, it's holding up my coffee table. Yeah. As, like as he lights his just, Fantastic Four had, on fire. I had it under the there. He's like, guys, uh, let me, Andre, what do you feel? Uh, anyway. Uh, John. Oh, okay, so uh, my pick is gonna, I'm gonna go modern because I've actually seen Andre's pick. Um, so I'm gonna go with an alternate pick and I think it's cool because it's a little more modern. Um, and it's from the current Fantastic Four run. And it's basically the thing versus Immortal Hulk. So we get to see yeah. the two of them fight. Uh, sorry, I'll just grab a picture here. And it's, and, it's a, and it's only a two issue arc. It's number 12 to 13. And the, I don't remember the reason why, but for some reason the thing is about to be unthinged, <laughs> depowered <laughs> it's, it's in like his, okay, a certain okay. amount of it's, hours. It's so he can go on his honeymoon, it's his honeymoon. 
Yeah, it's on his honeymoon. Yeah, that he that he unthings, which is so. Reed Richards, I can only figure out how to do this for like whoa, 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 a, a week for each thing. Sorry. <laughs> it's Hickman's run. The kids figured it out. It wasn't Reed. It was yeah. it was the kids. Okay. The kids <laughs> Why does he have this arbitrary else? limited time? But yeah, it, but the Hulk one week shows up. One week a year. Yeah, so the Hulk shows up and he's you know, kind of being controlled yet, but they also play this thing up that he actually it just likes to fight. So it's 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 a kind of cool storyline where because you always think who would win a fight, Thing or Hulk, and and Thing even in itself narration is like, well, who hits harder? And he's like, it's definitely the Hulk. Like Hulk hits harder, and and he d- he doesn't know how he's gonna beat him, and it's kind of like all the weight is on his shoulders because he's the only one there on this island to save all these people, including his new wife uh alicia and and then i I won't tell you exactly what happens at the end because it's a cool uh a moment and stuff and and you kind of quote unquote find out who wins the fight between hulk and thing um and it is available in a trade paperback you get it's only two issues so you get a whole bunch of padding of the following issues after but you know it's 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 well worth the read awesome uh good uh now we're off to scott so scott it's uh your turn oh is Um, scott going vintage or is he going modern my uh, I, I my my very first comic book that I bought in a comic book store was Fantastic Four three thirty four, uh, which was the first in the Walt Simonson run. Nice. Um, and I've I've always said that it's uh, it's like when baby ducks come out of their shell and they imprint on the first thing they see and they think that's their mother. I imprinted on the Fantastic Four hard, and. Um, Loved the Simonson run and have spent all the time the one, one. and have yep. spent all the time since. Um, I, I spent the bulk of uh, twenty to thirty years there saying it's okay, it's going to get good again. Wait, like it's good again. <laughs> um, nobody was a Fantastic Four kid when when I was growing up, but I I love those guys. There's there's something about the, the 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 symmetry or the balance or the elemental nature or something yeah. about the way these four came together so um that run for me is still huge he did 334 to 354 um in starting in like the fall of 89 i think and so i would i would take the whole run but if we're going to get a little more specific than that it it includes some pretty big moments and i won't list them because there's two other people still to go and i have a thought that maybe they might come up not me maybe dre but not me (laughs) right too old school for pat it's 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 a little you're actually clear you're clear Okay. Uh, well, go for it, Scott. Give us a little bit okay. more. Very, very quickly. The first three issues, he walks in and he gets handed the Acts of Vengeance crossover. And so he decides to have fun with it and make it that every C-list villain shows up thinking that they're going to take down the Fantastic Four to the point where they're tripping over each other. It's like Quill and Stilt Man. And the whole time they're like, who who are we talking about? What? Yeah, there you go. Wait, oh, wait. Ah. There was a bunch of covers where they were like... Yes. Yeah. yeah. And... Uh, um, and then they go from there into the time stream. They get, they discover that there's a time bubble in the future. They take it off an Avengers story and they go shooting out into a time sled called Rosebud 2 with um, um, uh, Iron Man and Thor along for the ride. And they have this big time adventure. When they get spat back out of it, they think they're back to their timeline, discover that no, they're now lost in time. And they have some quantum leap like jumps between different alternate realities, which was right up my alley at the time because I was inhaling quantum leaping back to the future as fast as I could. Um, they then spit out of there in time to get the new Fantastic Four that uh, John was mentioning earlier where you get Wolverine, <laughs> Ghost Rider, Hulk, and Spider-Man, which again was written uh, really comedically. Um, and I loved that because it was it was superhero stuff that wasn't super dark. It was it was funny. It was it was that right balance of kind of like current but silver agey and they just it was firing on all cylinders. All of this culminates, there they are. <laughs> All of this culminates in the 350 to 354 run. We're gonna skip 351 because it was an <laughs> out of sync one off that just fell then due to scheduling errors. But 350, 352, 353, and 354 are the four covers that I sent you, John. Um, and it begins with uh, the anniversary issue where the thing finally becomes the thing again. Mm. And then that is immediately followed by this really fun uh, adventure with the Time Variance Authority, the TVA, who've been monitoring this, this timeline no. and seen the, the nope, seen the trouble that they've nope. uh, all caused. Oh, sorry, I got sent a lot of pictures. Um, and so these 
time cops show up and arrest the Fantastic Four for what they've done and take them off. And um, it turns into this great big adventure that uh, uh, it's kind of, it, it, was a, it was neat to see a, a writer and artist take a story for 20 issues and have it all tied together. Mm-hmm. And so when he gets to the end, it's, um, it's, it's resolving everything that they've done through the previous uh, 16 issues. And um, there's a great scene in the middle of it where Reed and Sue have run off to try to solve the problem and create their escape, but they need a distraction. And it's Johnny and Ben just off leash, running through the TVA, causing as much mayhem and destruction as they can so that everybody's looking the other way when it's gone. There we go. So there's 350. That's uh, um, he got uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Thing turns back into um, uh, Sharon and uh, Ben turns into the thing. 352 is. These covers are so dope. Oh, it's, it's not just amazing. 352 yeah. is it's an like amazing. 33 a.m. It's yeah. an amazing, amazing episode. It's our issue. It's um, there's two stories being told through the thing, and it's all time stamped as you go through it. And it, you follow the, you read it through once, and you're reading what's happening with Ben and uh, Sharon and Johnny and Sue as they're trying to help Sharon deal with the fact that she's now not the thing anymore and she can't figure out what's happened. Um, but all through the same time, on the panels that are going alongside it, are Doom and Reed fighting with each other, and they keep appearing and disappearing in the timeline. And you get to the very end of the book, and they tell you how to reread it, where at the end of each page of 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 uh, Reed and Doom's fight, it tells you the time code to jump to to follow their story. So you're jumping back That's through the pages cool. now, trying to sync it up to the what was going on for, and it's it's fantastic. It's it's one of my favorite standalone issues. Awesome. Um, for that for that very reason, it was it was such a cool um, uh, premise and and use of the medium that uh, I always loved it. So I go back again and again. So those those were mine. Awesome! It was uh, before Kiefer was uh, taking that idea with him and the, the countdown <laughs> happening, as, as right. we're well aware. So, uh, Boop. Pat, Boop. Boop. yeah, <laughs> uh, and John loved the remake of Twenty Four. But let's carry on, Pat. <laughs> with um, Dr. Dre. So for me, I was I, I latched on to the Fantastic Four like in the mid. Thousands, truly, and it was actually because of the run of. That's actually got physical copies, probably. I do, I do. I keep, I keep my books. Um, <laughs> I, it was the run of Mark Wade and mm-hmm. the Weringo run, because I felt like that art to me was actually, uh, it, it was really nice. Like it was crisp, it was kind of comical, it was cartoony, and that's fine, whatever, right? Because that's what it is. And what la- what I really liked about it was the fact that um, they were actually portrayed as like an actual family as opposed to a group of superheroes, right? They, they, they did prank, like, you know, Johnny and Ben did pranks on each other. They complained about living together. They complained about the things that, you know, me and my brother would complain about, right? And then like, and, and anyways, it just goes to like my favorite story was, this is, was kind of ridiculous, was because near the end of the run, um, spoiler, I guess, but... Like, <laughs> Dr. Doom, around issue 500, had, like, did a swap with Ben and caused Reed to kill Ben. And my favorite couple of issues was the issues where he was trying to get him back. And it was ridiculous because what ended up happening, and I'm actually holding the issue right here, he actually ends up going to heaven to get Ben back, which was insane considering how for the I 20 think issues, I, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, the 20 issues going up to it, he was, you always see Reed as this guy who believed in science and, you know, didn't believe in anything except for facts and numbers and mathematics. And in order for him to get him back, he went to heaven and met a very meta Jack Kirby that was like in the issue. And to me, like, I really like the way the story was because it was kind of just Reed trying to go out of his comfort zone and, and try and comprehend something that just w- was incalculable, right? In reality, what all it really did was set up for uh, JMS to take over, you wanted, right? Mm. But you wanted his friend back. Pardon? Yeah, they needed the thing back. Just he wanted his friend back. 
Yeah, he wanted his friend back, and 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 from a writing perspective, his his their run almost ended, so he had to kind of restore the status quo. Yeah. But but that entire run, um, you know, his, his Mark Wade's run from the 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 late four hundreds all the way into the five hundreds was my favorite, I guess, era of the Fantastic Four between art and Wade's writing and and I and I still have my books, so so you know it was yeah. So this is the cover. This is the cover where they meet Jack Kirby. I don't have the screens John does, but this cover right here. That's what I'm saying. You have it right there. Nice, <laughs> nice. That's perfect. Uh, Andre, now you are. It's up to you, my friend. All right. So um, a lot of my runs got picked here, so I'm going to do something else. Um, but it's also one of the great comic book uh, writers uh, of 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 all time, in my opinion, and that's um, uh, Chris Claremont. Uh, and he did a run with Salvador La Roca. And uh, not only was it a fantastic, like, looking book, but it was it was just super cool. Uh, the art was colorful. The Fantastic Four, I don't think it ever, like, like looked that way. Sure, there was, you know, uh, you know it was very superhero-like. But, yeah, that's, that's the one. And mm-hmm. the thing that set this um, arc apart is that basically Reed and Doom switch bodies. So that's why you have Doom, but that's Reed's mind in there. And that's why the four are with him. And you see this transformation of Reed and he's really becoming more draconian and stuff like that. So it was a really cool, um, yeah, it's real. It's a really cool arc. And it also did some stuff with the time and, and introducing, um, the new character of of Valeria, who was supposed to be Sue and Doom's daughter uh, and stuff. And there was some heart-wrenching moments. There's a really cool cover uh, to that where she's walking away. Yeah, and she's like, you are my family. And and at first she wasn't accepted and stuff like that. So it was a really cool run for the Fantastic Four. I was trying to figure out what issue this was. I thought it was during the Pacheco run. No, Pacheco. uh, After like 35 and up, which which I was going to choose, I actually thought. Yeah, and and that was a great run too. Like the more the, the thing I loved about uh, doing this this podcast, this topic is I've read so much Fantastic Four, and like there's it's so good. Like you know what I mean? It's it is literally probably the most underrated book because people don't give it a chance. It's so heart wrenching when people would come into the store and they'd be like. I didn't know there was a Fantastic Four comic because they just watched the movies or the movies have just bastardized them so much that people can't get into them and, and, and stuff. And that's, and that's really sad. And even when Marvel wasn't publishing the Fantastic Four for a couple of years, to me, that was just like the biggest slap in the face. It's like, you can't make comics about the greatest family in comics. So you put them on hiatus for a couple of years. But uh, yeah, I think we've all smashed on some gem just moments yep. like these runs like like t- we didn't even touch on burn the wedding of sue and reed that run in the 200s fantastic you know so the fantastic four yeah super you know super amazing book it's a fantastic book and it's just underrated you know? yeah marvel's first family uh to your point andre and and we we understand why marvel didn't make any Fantastic Four products because every time they made something, Fox owned the right to that character. So, like, why am I making stuff for you to use in future movies? So, it's kind produce of a terrible movie so to, that to they, go alongside. They, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the whole company was built on, on, uh, on the Spider-Man Fantastic and the Fantastic Four, Four and yeah. for them to just abandon their roots like that was really insulting. Um, it's, it's, it's hard, Scott, because they... they remove themselves from the X-Men universe during that run too because again yep. I'm sure their lawyers are like if you make any character in this comic they belong to Fox yeah so I think like, X-Men oh, only got a little this. taste of what Fan4 got but though Fan4 yeah. definitely got shot published X-Men yeah. stuff, right with the Fantastic Four they just hard stopped it you know and, yeah. and after oh, Fox yeah run. at least we got mediocre to terrible but, X-Men yeah, books and, and, and here's the thing to, to your point we have an opportunity to for Marvel to you know now they have everything back outside of Spider-Man they, they can really take a good shot and try their best at, at making a Fantastic Four movie that we'll be proud of. And, and, and as much as I was kind of sad to, to hear that they canceled that Doctor Doom movie, I'm also ecstatic. I'm like, finally, just, just do it right. Let's put this together and, and let's- Stop let's screwing them up. 
Yeah, and, and, I, I, and part of the thing too is now that they have a stronger universe of magic, I'm more excited about Doctor Doom in that side of it. I don't need him with Doombox. I want him fighting with magic. I want him to, to have that story arc for him because he's the duality of, of Doom is that he's can be a good guy, can be a bad guy. He's, he's, kind, of, he's kind of in the gray at, at times, but uh, he'll, he'll kind of do what's best for him. Uh, but there are moments when he, he does do the right thing. So that's kind of what we all want to see. And, and just a regular mustachio twirling villain is, is boring. It, it, it's not Second smartest know. man and second greatest sorcerer. Yeah. Yes. And, and which is, which is in, in this universe, I mean, they've, everything That's exists for them. To, to, for, for, yeah. People get to understand this as, as their greatest villain is an evil Tony Stark, Doctor Strange hybrid. Yep. And that, that'll be, I think that'll be really well received now based on the, the groundwork this universe has is, is laid for laws around those yeah. two. And, and especially with, with Doctor Strange 2, uh, with that universe being set up and, and, and bringing in, you know, Brother Voodoo and other interesting, weird magic characters, is just going to make it much more of a dynamic, dynamic universe so yeah. that, that Strange can hang out and, and know that Doom is on the radar. So I, that's, that's the more of the kind of the segue that I would like them to do in the, and this is another thing that he mentions Doom. In, in the Doctor Strange movie as a magic user rather than even mentioning the Fantastic Four. I think that's the nice segue to, to start things off. Just noticing on a map somewhere that there's a glowing magic, something happening there, or, or have uh, Baron Mordor mention that he, he, he could not take magic away from Doom. He tried, but there was one guy in Europe that he's like, I'm not touching that guy. So I think that's like the way to do it without you know, being too much on the nose. Uh, and that would be super cool. So um, we're going to jump on to our, our next topic, uh, which is best Fantastic Four alternate member. Um, you know, in Hickman's run, when and, and spoiler again, when Johnny dies, uh, Valeria puts on the whiteboard, like, replacement members. Um, so she actually put a list of all the characters. Um, we've had, you know, I mentioned uh, an FF. We had a, a different Fantastic Four group. We've had uh, She-Hulk. We've had various members. So... This is a draft, so once a person is gone, they are gone. So you have to come up with someone else. <laughs> but and we can pick anybody, right? We can pick any superhero, right? You can pick anyone, but yeah. I'm I'm gonna pick you know someone whose canon fits in the fits in the Fantastic Four or who's already been a member, um, because you know I, I don't want. I guess Andre's gonna pick Galactus or something ridiculous. The Beyonders, like the Beyonder, would be great on the Fantastic Four. Um, but <laughs> I don't think I've ever said the Beyonder was great. <laughs> We uh, all know that Andre is about the Molecule Man and no one else. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, if John, if this was the DC Universe, John would know immediately I'd pick Booster Gold, but that is not the case. Um, <laughs> so Crossover. that is the rules for this one. Yes, Andre, you can pick whoever you want, but I'm going to go with Canon. I'm going to go by the guy that fits in like a glove, who can, who can talk shop with Reed, born and raised in New York, friends with Human Torch, uh, a hero to the kids, uh, someone who's part of the Future Foundation, uh, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He is by far the, 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 you know, the He's layup the of all of He's the canonical. When, when Hickman did Future Foundation, he is not only uh, an educator, he, he, he has that really good conversation with, with Franklin about loss, about, you know, I had, you know, I don't know if I told you or your parents told you, but my uncle died too. Like, and having that conversation, and he has the gravitas of a hero. And to your point, Scott, he talked about being a hero means things. And like, you know, he had an opportunity and Franklin goes, I had an opportunity, I could have stopped things. And Spider-Man goes, well, here's the thing. I did have an opportunity to stop the death of my uncle and it, it didn't happen. And this is what it means to be a hero. And this is why we do what we do. And, 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 and having... Someone like Spider-Man, who is not the strongest, who's, who's fine, he can hold his own, who's a smart guy, but talk to arguably the most powerful person in the universe about responsibility and what it means to be a hero um, is, is something that's it's, it's great. And yeah, Spider-Man is, is he's self-deprecating. He works with the thing. Like he, he can do everything and more. Um, and I think he'd be as, as canon, as canonical as it is, uh, Spider-Man is is the the easiest of choices. So uh, that is the pick of all picks. Can I just interject for a minute, John? Yes. You know that picture that you put up. How can you tell me that the Rock would not look like the thing there? 
<laughs> in that exact picture that you put up, how can you tell me that that does I'm, not look like he, The Rock? He would, I'm fine with him looking like The Rock. I'm just saying. I'm thing, just saying. And moving. I'm on. just saying that Rock always plays the same invincible dude in every movie he plays. Yeah. Yeah. Um, At and least John fits. Cena is willing to take a hit. We'll see. Uh, so that that is my my pick, <laughs> Rob. It is up to you. I'm looking for the Denzel Washington pick again. Uh, go I'm ahead. not going there. Um, okay, so you I'm going to switch Denzel into Brother Voodoo instead. <laughs> uh, no, Black Denzel Panther, Denzel Washington. This is it. Uh, I'm going to go. So we're, I'm not doing. I know that the MCU is obviously uh, dovetailed away from uh, the comics, um, but I was going to go with uh, in issue 384. Um, Doom and Reed are missing, and and Sue Storm hires Scott Lang to be the technical advisor for the Fantastic mm-hmm. Four because he's got. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm glad I screwed somebody over today. Do <laughs> my large mug at you? <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. Just for the record, those big bubbas are usually only seen at resorts down south, so we know <laughs> what Scott's bringing when he goes down south on a trip. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so he served as a technical advisor uh, and the team's leader uh, in place of in place of Reed because they needed to have that uh, mental. Now, obviously, in the MCU, <laughs> I don't think we can all agree that Paul Rudd would be <laughs> a technical advisor. Uh, you know, he doesn't have the the, the <laughs> smarts that he, he does in the comics. But that's my uh, auxiliary member, or alternate member, uh, based in canon was um, Scott Lang. Good pick. Good pick. Good pick, John. You know my pick. And it's Wolverine. only because then I can cast a certain somebody. <laughs> Where'd it go? My guy. Tyrese. Tyrese. Luke Cage. Oh, no, <laughs> recast oh. as Tyrese. Who <laughs> was, was on the team the, the, for like two or three issues? Doesn't matter. It counts. It two counts, issues. baby. It counts. Thing, Thing loses his powers, so they hire, hero for hire, Luke Cage, yep. <laughs> who proceeds to get in a brawl with Sue Storm at some point. <laughs> but, but that, could was, not have been a, that, <laughs> that could not have been a Stan Lee decision, right? It was after. It must have been after. Was I, don't it? I don't remember the exact issue. But yeah. Great. Great pick. Great pick. That was great. All right. Scott, <laughs> now you, you have a little bit of time to uh, do deliberation. She, She-Hulk is available. <laughs> she hulks available, yeah. Uh, no, I've got to go. I got to go, Ms. Marvel. Uh, she thing, but Ms. Marvel. Um, just based on when I was reading, uh, and she was such a huge part of that that twenty issue run. I mentioned that uh, to now sidestepper would be wrong, but <laughs> we'll pretend I wasn't going to take Ant Man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as, yeah, Ms. Marvel in the corner. Ms. Ms. Marvel definitely. Awesome. Good one. Good one. Is it is it like this, Miss Marvel? That's that's yes, pretty old. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's that's a cool costume. Yeah. yeah. Like the she she was like a wrestler that met the thing. Makes sense. Yeah, she was a female wrestler. She wasn't like Miss Marvel as in like Carol Danvers, Miss Marvel. The the Venn diagram of Patrick right now in the wrestling and the and the Fantastic Four has Ms. never Marvel? been more aligned. Miss Marvel, yeah. wrestling, Fantastic Four is I'm, like the I <laughs> dig this costume. I dig this costume. She All wore right. that for a while, and then she eventually yeah. uh, mutated into yeah, the that's, thing. And then she actually yeah, she cool, yeah. So eventually, it becomes a lady thing running around. Yeah, I was gonna, I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> it was it was when it was when Ben Grimm was like super rocky. Remember, like there was yeah. a couple where he was like because it was they they were both mutated yeah. together, and what happened was that he mutated more and became all spiky, and she mutated to look like he used to look like. He became and like then, a Toblerone bar. It's like this. Yeah. And then I that, know, that's that. Know, and then he turns back to, he loses <laughs> his powers and she's now the thing. And then, and then he gets the suit from Tony Stark. And so then they're both kind of running around, but he gets to take his off at the end of the day. And I think they, they touched a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> they touched a little bit. On, so uh, ridiculous. On, on what it meant. That was in a people. comic. I didn't draw that. <laughs> They, so, they did well. They did so much stuff with with Ben and what it meant for him to feel like he lost his humanity when he became this monster. Yeah. Um. And I think to to then try to explore that through the experience of a woman who then feels like she becomes that much of a monster. I think they they tried to explore that, but I'm pretty sure it was just some pretty heavy handed fumbling by male writers 
uh, yeah. failing to there, execute There was correctly. a couple, I remember actually reading some of those issues and thought they were really heavy because like there was all these things about her like, you know, being angry at life and it was just kind of dark. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that that run that I was talking about, they end up when they end up on one of the islands in time, they all lose their powers, and she reverts back to human. And so part of it is, well, we got to leave, and she's like, um, "This I'm is kind of nice." <laughs> yeah. so, I miss this. <laughs> all right, Pat, it is up to you. What do you? What if do we're you... talking about members, I mean, I don't know why I, you have to mention Crystal, right? Like Crystal is like the original replacement, right? Yes. Yes. Um, like, I mean, she had powers that kind of jive really well with them, right? And yeah. He kind of was like, she was kind of like an honorary fifth member more so than like a true, true replacement because Sue was only gone for what, about a year? But like, Crystal, Crystal, right? And then at the time, her and Johnny had the entire thing. Yeah. Right? So she was my favorite like replacement member. Not, yeah, Crystal. Yeah. Right? Um, you have all these pictures of superheroes sitting on beds, John. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, hey, that came up. You know why? Because during that era, it was the 70s, and every woman was a pinup. What was a pinup model? Yeah. So every time Kirby drew like drew like a new character, it was always drawn like that. No yeah. joke. Yeah. He did the same for Medusa. He did the same for some of the other, like. It, it was a different time. That's that's it. Yeah, it was a different time. It was a different time. All right. That that's uh, your pick, Crystal. Yeah, Crystal, for sure. All right, uh, Andre's going completely zigging and zagging yeah. because all of us picked members of the Fantastic Four. Uh, Andre, uh, it's your turn. Oh, it's super easy. Easy. I it was super though. easy, man. T'Challa and Aurora. Yes, one. I saw that Panther too. Black Panther and Storm. One. They, they jump in. No, you they can't pick in. both. One. Okay, Black Panther, but they <laughs> okay. both do it together. But no, Black you can't. No, one, one. You got room for one. <laughs> All right, Black and Panther. It's a power struggle. There yes, yes, but they both replace at the same time. So yeah, that was sick. That was a sick move. Yeah, and we all know that that uh, Black Panther is just super cool. So. Uh, there's a, there's this, a, this is because Sue and Richard had marital issues, right? And they had to step no, away for a second. That's very real. No. It was after Civil War. Yeah. yeah. And in Hickman's run, uh, Ham and T'Challa have a, a bond beyond time and space as they went to visit the uh, Panther God. So uh, he he is he he is uh, refers to each other as well. I think Bree uh, refers to T'Challa as his best friend. So and also, which is I'm like, whoa, okay. They were both on the Illuminati, right? So yes. Did yes. he forget about Ben Grimm? Apparently, to the yeah. Panther God, he is the best friend. So I don't know how this works. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe uh, Ben Grimm's Alpha best friend, and he's just regular best friend. So that's how it works. Alpha, uh, as Tyrese would say. Also, double Alpha. <laughs> double Alpha. Tyrese. Double alpha <laughs> <laughs> stop! Stop <laughs> hating. All y'all. Stop. Wow. Hating. Okay. Um, all right. So now we're we're at the final topic, uh, which is uh, Fantastic Four. Favorite Fantastic Four moment. This could be anything. This is this is a wild card. It could be, you know, uh, a show, a game, a movie. Uh, John, there you go, John. You can original John Panther Panther movie, buddy. What, whatever, whatever you want. We don't, we don't, we don't want to rank the movies in order. Of Scott did such a the most tolerable. <laughs> Scott most did tolerable such a FF one. Yeah. Before we go, uh, yeah, Scott. Okay, Scott did such an eloquent job in talking about his moment when he first picked up his comp Fantastic Four. I'm like, well, that's that's his moment, but. <laughs> I guess he's gonna do something okay. else. As he's well. got more I got, moments. I got, a, I got a few extra. Got, <laughs> got moments up his sleeves. Stuff. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna. So my my uh, moment is like, there's a lot of things I love about the Fantastic Four. The fact that Reed Richards is the acme of the Marvel universe. Anytime anything happens, it's like unstable molecules. It's like, you know, Fantastic Four badge drive. Like whatever. Reed just kind of is truly is the the best inventor. As much as uh, Tony is a genius, Reed really knows how to sell and manufacture stuff. But uh, my favorite, car. yeah, my my uh, moment is uh, Fantastic Four issue uh, six hundred. So that is my moment when reading that that book. It, they threw everything in the kitchen sink at you, um, and I, I really loved everything when uh, of that book, just in terms of of. Um, you know, when, when the Spider-Man seeing Johnny for the first time and um, as, as Human Torch up there, there's a finger pointing, uh, when, when he, he comes up and does that Fantastic Four into the sky, it's, uh, 
really tugged some heartstrings. So it was a really cool moment um, for everyone included because uh, the Fantastic Four was in the most dire of moments. So, um, you know, they were, they were losing the battle and, and just like in Lord of the Rings, look to, this, look to the sky, um, there he comes to save the day. So that is the moment that I, I really uh, liked a lot. Um, and uh, it's, it's 100 pages of just fantastic stuff. So there's... The art is, is a variant, and, and you get to see all the backstory of, of all, all these different characters, but Fantastic Four 600 is my favorite moment. It's, it's great. So there we go. Uh, Rob, go for it. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go uh, on a non-FF uh, comic. I'm going to go back to something I had mentioned, um, I think it was last week. We did our Spider-Man um, episode. I'm going to go back with the alien symbiote. Ooh. I pulled it from my original graphic novel. And this is uh, issue 258, Amazing Spider-Man, where um, Mary Jane finds out that Peter Parker and Spider-Man are one of the same. Spider-Man doesn't understand what's going on. He starts to realize something's not right with the symbiote costume that he got from Beyonder. That's twice we're mentioning Beyonder in this episode. Um, <laughs> and he starts saying something's not going on here. And he, start, and he goes and he visits Reed Richards uh, at the Baxter building. And says, I need you to figure out what this is. And Reed has always said, I've always had this issue, uh, this uh, something wrong with this costume. The way that it, he got it and everything else, they do testing and they realize that it's an alien symbiote, that it's, it's essentially constricting Peter. It's using his psyche at night. There's a, that shot in this, in this issue where he's swinging and, and Peter's sleeping, but the, the costume is still pretending to be Spider-Man, right? Um, and they actually remove it. And the reason why I have this is because they, you know, Reed takes it and he caps it, uses the sonic waves, captures the, the, uh, the, the costume. But then Spider-Man's covering his face and Johnny's like, you know, what's going on with you? And he goes, I don't want you seeing who I really am. And exactly. And throws um, and, and helps him out and gives him an old FF costume, but a bag on his head. And the yep. reason I bring this up, <laughs> <It's a big laughs> right, is yep. because as silly and as ridiculous as this is, that character, that baghead Spider-Man character, has it, it, you have him in toy lines. He's been in video games. He's been in uh, like you took that one issue, that one Fantastic Four moment, and you brought him and used that one character. And now he's he's you know you see him in lots of different mediums. But on yep. top of that is that. Johnny Storm is totally nutting Peter Parker and puts a kick me sign on the back. And I was like, this is pure John Ho, Rob Gadette styles, chop hey. busting going on, <laughs> right? And so he's swinging. And as he's swinging home, thinking, oh, I hope nobody sees me, he stops like this robbery happening. Spidey gets down there, starts beating some people up. Reporter's like, are you part of the new Fantastic Four? And he's got this kick me sign that Johnny Storm. So I thought at that just encompasses you have Reed being super smart, you know, capturing the alien symbiote, which ends up becoming Venom. Johnny Storm, you know, completely twigging Peter yeah. Parker. And yeah, now you've got comic books and, and, and toys and whatnot with the egghead. So yeah, there you merchandise, go. As as Halloween right. costumes. It's, it was a perfect segue Halloween because costume. it leads to Spider-Man joining the Fantastic Four. It's like, you look in that uniform. So it's, it's good. Yeah. Uh, go. <laughs> great, great, great one, Rob. Uh, Redemption Tour begins now for you. Uh, now it's uh, John. It's a good choice. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, loading time, loading time, I loading actually, time, loading think time. About, I actually have things. Think this about an issue of moment. Fantastic Four you've read. Yeah, John, I, I, I would like moments. you to bring an hourglass next time so you can actually physically turn it and like the micro <laughs> Windows icon hey, and you can hey, just go back I, and forth. I, I have this research done. I'm done. And so it begins in a uh, uh, Fantastic Four oh, 575, yeah. where they're yeah. flying around and all of a sudden they pass this Galactus corpse and he just kind of goes, yeah, that's a future Galactus I killed and buried under New York or something. Yeah. The moment is where later on, a couple issues later, um, sorry, I'm trying to pull these pictures as it's going on here. The surfer comes up and sees this body and that's, that's issue 583 and he's just like, this is not cool. Yeah. Like this is this is bad, and that kicks into what Stu was talking about. So I'm lucky that he didn't start delving into it a little more, because <laughs> then I would have had no moment. And he just like yep. this is unacceptable. And he actually confronts Reed later and is like, "Yo, what's up with this?" And Reed has to explain it to Galactus. I'm like, this is nuts. Yeah. And that that I thought that was just crazy. The fact that there's a Galactus corpse. Like, how did, how did he get it there? Did he dig the hole with his giant elastic hands and shove it in there? Like, 
Did he transport it piece by piece? I don't know if that was covered in the comic history in issues or not. It, it was covered but before. How and did that corpse get there? It, it was covered before. But that's the wonderful run with Hickman is that, as I talked before, he has a tapestry. Like Part of that is also the Kree show up. And then there's like the Inhumans and, and Namor and all these characters. Mole Man shows up. So everyone, the... the um, uh, high evolutionary, like all these characters of, of Fantastic Four lore get kind of weaved into this storyline, which is just so uh, amazing. Um, like, how cool is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, John, that was a, a good one. Uh, now we're off to Come start. On. All right, good, way to go, John. There you go. You you go. Need your... <laughs> Stick the land. Come on, guys, please. I did what I was supposed to do. I did my homework. Please <laughs> praise me. <laughs> Let me give him a hero biscuit. He mailed it. <laughs> um, a, no, a no prize. Yeah, exactly. You're going to know prize. Uh, right around the same time that I was reading that, uh, that original run, um, I chased down the 1987 Fantastic Four versus X Men miniseries, which was a great series and um, really helped me understand the, the team and the players a lot. Um, but one of the reasons that. I, there are a lot of good sequences in it and because people are kind of seem to be talking about like whole issues. I'm going to extend that to two scenes. Uh, you got them there, John. The first one yeah. is uh, moment number one. Uh, Rogue grabs Thing off the ground in the middle of the fight and uh, kisses him to suck his powers out. And the, the prose <laughs> that goes with it um, about how they're both trapped in their bodies. <laughs> that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of text. Dude, There's read the bottom of that last panel. She thought she'd be attacking a toad, and then she touched the soul of a. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Soliloquies. Oh my I god! He should be holding a skull while he's doing this, right? I mean, yeah. I when I read this as a kid, it was it was the moment when I understood the comics could be more than just the medium, mm. and I like it. Pat is just. Does she normally shape shift? Does she normally shapeshift into everything that she absorbs? I don't think that's a thing. I think that's that's at the time that's nice. it was, <laughs> yeah. she turned yeah. into like a sheep. Yeah. Also, she would... remember at that point, Rogue was like old looking, so things changed. She didn't used to absorb people's powers like that, right? Yeah. But, yeah. And so oh, I, that was that was a scene the panel I just, I just, wow. like, Pat is shaking his head like I made him. <laughs> Stuck up a lemon or something. That's ridiculous. That's why. It's that's so good. Crazy. That's old school. Pat, Pat was like, if, to be it. fair, if that was John that. Cena, Pat would be on, on board. So this is <laughs> depends, just, on, who depends, depends on the content. Depends on who Rogue is. Yeah, depends on who playing Rogue. Uh, if it's Kristen Bell, Pat's involved. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Yeah, Anna Paquin. Yeah, Anna Paquin. Anna or, Paquin. Or, or, and or, so they have, they have two big fights between the two teams in this. And this was the point where everybody thought, like, the X-Men were the shit, and that was it. And you couldn't walk five feet without somebody yelling about how great they were. And so to watch some of the, the, the square offs in this was fantastic. And they, the other one was, John, if you got the shot there, uh, Wolverine yeah. steps up to Ben and talks some smack, and the thing knocks him out. <laughs> one punch Bonks right on top of the, the head. head. Bonk, <laughs> and he's out. Bonk. <laughs> Bonk him in the uh, head. Overhand the, chop. The uh, the next panel is uh, he pats him on the head to Sweet Dreams, Bob. <laughs> that's that was oh, the end of that fight. Man, that was the it, whole Wolverine uh, that, thing fight. Yeah. That's, well, that's like that's like yeah. That makes dreams. no sense though. That makes no sense <laughs> yeah, because Wolverine's it, skull is adamantium. He should have been complete. The rock, you know, the thing's hand. No, his have been his brain would have rattled around like a freaking tennis ball. Yeah. To be fair, Wolverine got his, his revenge. His brain and, is and, not adamantium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, Tom DeFelco showed up, drove the entire title off a cliff, and uh, took care of that little. Yeah, like like, and then the and then the thing had to wear a helmet for a long time. So let's not yeah. forget that one. He went. He. <laughs> Unfortunately, we <laughs> had that. Yeah. Don't forget the bucket helmet. When nobody, yeah. like, nobody else remembers I mean, thing with a helmet and Sue with the super revealing '90s costume. Not, she had the those. She had the, the four, four in, cutout. Yeah, four <laughs> cutout in the midriff. Yeah, in the it's, chest. it's rough. Yeah, and the time is malice. Yeah, yeah. And there were some uh, '90s. There's there some periods we definitely don't talk about. I'm glad <laughs> that we didn't do that list, but there's a lot to sweep under the rug when it comes to the Fantastic Four. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just really like, love that. that it was that an entire FF Robinson run nobody mentioned. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> the FFX Men run was uh, was a was a fun miniseries um, and really helped me 
at that point, coming in that late to a, a title, understand who they were and some of the motivations in that. I, I would backdoor highly recommend that one as well. I'm Fair done. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Good job. Pat. Um, my favorite moment going back to like the way, yeah, nice. Exactly. Going is. back to like, you know, the wearing wage stuff. I think it looks sillier. I think this is a cooler picture. I think it looks it is sillier. Than that. Yes, they're sillier. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Pat. No, no worries. Um, so going back to, you know, why I like the Fantastic Four, it was really about the whole, the whole family aspect. And, um, there was one issue that they sold that was like, you know how sometimes Marvel does these cheaper issues to get people on board. There was one Fantastic Four issue that was only like nine cents right because it was supposed to be cheaper than the 10 cent adventure that batman did at that time right and it was basically like a recap issue but in this issue it was kind of it was basically the, the the fantastic four living a life seeing their agents seeing their publicists and things like that and my favorite moment from that issue and, and one of my like i think if my most favorite moment of fantastic four at all is that near the end of that issue Reed declines an invitation to like some science fair or something like that. And the reason why was this was shortly after Valeria was officially born. And he declined it because we he, he wanted to stay home and watch the baby. And, and like there was a really heart, heart touching, I, I, I don't remember the issue number, I have it in my bin, but what it was was he spends a panel or two just kind of talking to Valeria and saying things like, you know what, this is how life is going to be, but you know, um, Everything I do is kind of weird, but I'm the guy who caused my friends to turn into mutants. So, you know, we're, we're, we're making action figures. We're talking to a publicist. Why? Because I didn't want people, the public, to see my family as what they were, monsters. But I wanted them to see them as who they are. So I refused to give them secret identities. I made them public. We fly around the sky in the car. We get, I gave them all ridiculous names. I told them to call themselves, you know, Mr. Fantastic and the Human Torch. Do, do you, does anybody want to call themselves Mr. Fantastic? No. But if I don't do it and I stick, keep my, my family in secret, it's going to change everything. But right now we're, we're, we're fully public. People know who we are and we're going to roll with it as opposed to, you know, have, have, have people fear us. Right. So, so, and it was, I was kind of like, it was, it was really like, it was a good moment for me because it was really kind of like a behind the scenes look at, at how Reed really kind of feels about his family. Right. But again, it was all part of that Mark Raid, Mark Raid run, which was, I think fantastic. But yeah, it was, it was, it was that kind fantastic. of fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. What, should we, what, awesome. what should we call ourselves, Pat? Like, the fantastic. Call ourselves, like, no, the, the fantastic. This is pretty fantastic, Reed. Fantastic. <laughs> and that again? Yes. Sorry, you guys probably didn't watch the new Fantastic Four movie. Yeah. But there's a super cringe scene at the end where they're like, what do we call ourselves? And it, it's, a, it's awkward as hell. Oh, boy. Like, the fact All that right. that got past much, that. Much like this. <laughs> much like what you're doing right now, John. It's really. <laughs> hey, shut up. Go and watch it. <laughs> watch the first 20 minutes and, like, skip the rest. No, don't. Don't. don't All stop. right. Uh, Andre, go for it. All right. So, um, I would probably say, again, there was many really cool moments from, like, the wedding of, of, of Reed and Sue. Um, almost any Namor moment uh in 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 f f or just just gold but i i really i really like the uh and i thought Stu was gonna steal that that is the moment but uh the 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 sacrifice that uh johnny storm made I, you can't read that and not tear up man like you just can't and it's just at that moment like look at that he's just he's just like you think you got me a billion to one odds he's like i got this and they called it like like the the supernova, like look at that. He's just he did it to save his friends, his family, his kids, and and it was just a mate. Like it was just you know I I remember it really reminded me of another moment in the movie, like the Last Samurai, where the the son you know saves his father and he says go go and he's covering him with the crossbow and, and he knows there's like he's got no chance of getting but he knows his father has to live. I think that was like that sacrifice that Johnny knew that those kids were the future. And, and, and there's that moment where he's touching the, the shield with, with, with Ben and Ben's like, don't do this. And he's like, neither of us want to do this, but this is what it is. Uh, and I, I don't think, I think in comics, you, you don't get better moments when the hero, like just 
I don't want to say man's up, but when the hero just it's the sacrifice, you know, and it's and it's 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 when it's those insurmountable odds um, that just that's just what what does it. And I I feel like you know we all mentioned it. This was issue five eighty eight by issue six hundred. He was back, so it was yeah. So back. spoiler alert: he wins this fucking fight. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. wins this. He, fight like he, a freaking boss. Yeah, he wins everything in this and yeah. and Hickman's and, run. So yeah. I think it was sad that they brought him back so quickly. Like, I think, like, there's moments when, when a character goes out like that, you're like, how, what's a better way to go out? Like, you, there's no better way to go than saving your family yeah. <laughs> and, and against those odds. And just, he survives. It just, he survives. <laughs> yeah, but he shouldn't have, right? Well, no, no, he was revived constantly. He died. Yes, he, he did die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was it well hit. written, but it, it, they took away that noble sacrifice. Right. So, but yeah, I was just, it was that, that's, that's my moment. I, I, I'm a sucker for those moments. In, in comedy. Andre, I'm going to give you one more chance to give another moment These because, dudes. because uh, <laughs> this, this, this was all, that was basically my, my run. And I didn't want to talk about it because I wanted people to, to read it. So if you want another moment, because essentially, yes, that is my well, story. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So I, we I'll touched see, upon the okay. same thing. So you know if you want I'll one more, go one more. My other, my other moment that I thought was really cool, really different, it was in Civil War. And I don't know if, I don't have the panel right here or anything, but there's Reed on this big whiteboard and he's trying to figure out the problem. He's trying, he's trying to mathematically equate, like, how do we get past this? And he couldn't solve that problem. And it was one of those moments where you're just like, what the hell? Like, look how big this is. And it, and it, it shattered the floor. It shattered the family. Like, the thing left. Uh, you know, and, and, and stuff like that. So that was, a, that was a pretty cool moment. Not a happy moment or anything like that, but again, a very cool moment because you never see Reed um, give up and, and stuff or anything like that. But, but it, was, it was a conundrum for him. So. I struggled with the, the way they were written during Civil War and how easily they split the team apart for, because it fit the narrative of what was yeah. going on. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, I... They've had 40 years worth of them sticking through things, sticking thin together, and no matter what, their family above all else. And then this comes along, and they're like, oh, well, screw you, I'm going to France. Like, okay, that's great. But that was, you know, it, just, that was, it just it spoke to the general disrespect they always seem to show the Fantastic Four. It was like, oh, and they're also here, and I guess we should tie them in somehow. Like, they always felt like a secondary thought. The problem with that is, and, and, and while Civil War had great moments, it, it was flawed execution from the beginning because Tony – and Cap would never have spoken to each other like that. That's one of the things that the, the, the premise of it was, was, was interesting, but they, they did not treat the characters as they were. They just said, we need two sides. Who are we going to put them on? And that's, and that's the flaw of Mark Millar. Like everybody thinks he's so great. The guy doesn't understand the characters that he writes when he's dealing with, with these superheroes. And you're absolutely right. Didn't, none of them got the respect they deserved and, and, and stuff like that, but it was a monumental, like, you know, uh, event, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and as we're burning the, the midnight oil, I'm going to give everyone <laughs> one more chance to give one more moment. Um, I got to share. So one. I was prepared. Wait, 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 I actually thought the last scene in the newest Fantastic Four movie where they're fighting Doom was actually kind of sweet. John, I know you hate this, but <laughs> I was telling this to Dre the other day. Watching we had a whole movie, debate. Fantastic, yeah. Mr. Fantastic's move on Doom was to throw a stretchy straight okay. into <laughs> Doom's face. Never and he before. follows that up with a double stretchy straight into Doom's face. No, and then he follows he... that up with a third punch, which Doom catches. Okay. This is the smartest man in the planet, They've by the way. They've never fought before. <laughs> stretchy punching Doom. some time <laughs> to practice and learn the moves. All I'm saying is... They do everyone except Reed was trained <laughs> to do what? something. But that's the thing, though. When they were being trained, Reed left. This is why we hated the movie. Reed left, remember? <laughs> he didn't get military training. The other three did. Smartest guy. Right? <laughs> Smartest guy mathematically and scientifically. Let me try Not something different. Enough. Okay. John, Let me try something else. Anyways, anyways, <laughs> sometimes the shortest route, John, is a straight path. It, so did, you it, sometimes it wasn't, it. though. He got his ass kicked. You know what? To be fair, he might be a disciple of Wing Chung, where it's like straight punches. 
You don't. And you don't do like, side no, punches. They go, they go like. They go yeah. like this. They so go maybe, like this. They don't go maybe, like this. And they don't go like this. Maybe they, <laughs> Mr. Fantastic did this as a as a way for purpose. So Anyways, no. all I'm <laughs> saying is, Stu, I actually felt the last scene or the fight scene in that movie where where the four of them kind of combine their powers yep. in a 2000 and like 18 type of CGI graphics was kind of cool. Yeah. Hey, honestly, uh, you have your moment. It's no less than John's ridiculous comments all the time. So John has nowhere <laughs> right. to stand on. Right. When like, he, you, know, you know, so like, you, that, like, that's, you do you, buddy. I, I, I don't mind is, that scene. They were yeah. flying through the, they were flying yeah. through like the, whatever was the negative zone and like, you know, Human Torch is flying next to Sue's force field bubble yeah. with everybody in it. That looks kind of cool. Hey, cool. this, the scene right before he turns a corner and he whips a fireball at Sue Storm out of surprise. <laughs> and just so they can establish that she can make the bubble. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Let, let, let's all be. He would have murdered her if there she was wasn't ready. It was a time skip. Yeah. It was it, a time skip. Let's, oh, let's all, yeah. you know. Uh, during which they were supposedly trained. <laughs> they were, except for, except for Reed, which is why he's kept on punching Dr. Doom. Yeah, this is all part of his trilogy, John. This is the next of the romantic comedy, so leave him alone. Why, why gotta be this? The next one is a rom-com in New York. It's like serendipity. They're gonna meet Damn in a bar somewhere. you could say it's a rom-com. Yeah, exactly. So, and then it's gonna lead to an epic fight movie. So leave I just thought it was a sweet moment. Yeah. I've never, I'm in, in, and like after watching the other two movies a couple of days ago before that, I never actually, like n none of those movies had a scene where they did the whole flying through the air in a force bubble with the human torch following behind yep perfect um thank you scott one more one more one more shot um i'm, I'm getting ready for scott to, to john there yeah, yeah uh, I'm, get, I'm, getting getting stepping, I'm getting ready i'm getting ready stepping a little out uh off the main title here but uh what if issue number 42 what if the invisible woman had died um mm. so sue richard dies in childbirth uh giving birth to Franklin because uh, they're delayed coming back from the negative zone with the, the particles that are going to save them. And um, this it is a deep was, cut. Deep cut. Yeah, <laughs> it was an issue that um, uh, it really established who I called her the glue of the team earlier. And I, I that, that that's from reading this as a kid. Um, because it was about each of their relationships to her and how she kind of held them together and in her absence, how they kind of fall apart. Um, it was the first time a comic book made me cry. <laughs> uh, it, was, it, was, it was really good, really powerful. Um, eventually, uh, uh, Reed kind of goes insane and blames a nihilist. And so he goes back into the negative zone to kill him. And uh, it's a, it was, unexpected and it was one of the books that made me decide that what if was a cool title and I needed to read more about it. So I absolutely recommend what if issue number 42 from December of 1983. Good luck finding awesome. those by the way. <laughs> <laughs> what ifs when properly executed are pretty crazy. They can yeah. become some really crazy things. Right. Not when, some of those what ifs not when they're just throwaways. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. One of the first ones I read was uh, the, the second series of What If, where it was What If the Fantastic Four all got the same power. And so instead of them each getting their own, they all get variations of the same. And so there's four stories told over the course of it. And yeah. some of them are like, you know, they all get the invisible stuff. So they all go and join S.H.I.E.L.D. and they become awesome. And others are, they all become monsters. And so they go hide out with the Mole Man for the rest of their lives. Like it's, it's all <laughs> over the map and it's awesome. varying degrees of success and failure. Neat. Awesome. Uh, John. Show. Not a movie, but a good show. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to leave uh, Thing not having any pants in the new Fantastic Four movie oh for God. Rob. I'm sure that's his favorite moment. <laughs> 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 he told me earlier in a message, he sent me a picture, but it's too graphic. To post, so. <laughs> that's why he was on his phone there. <laughs> good, good one, I'm John. Gonna pick, I'm going to pick Pick, it's it's actually from the new story. The, I'm going to go modern again. It was when um, Ben Grimm's about to get married and he asked Johnny Storm to be his best man. Mm. And Johnny's like, no. And Thing's like, what? He's like, no. You know the best man is Reed Richards. And Johnny just kind of explodes into this, like, we, we haven't done everything. we got to find him. And he's like, Reed Richards is so good. He's going to show us a sign. And Reed Richards shows him a sign. 
and it and it was just a cool moment. I don't remember. I don't have the exact issue numbers, but it was during the newest run. I think the early issues, like within the first four issues or something like that, of the current run. So I, I thought that was I thought that was just crazy. That was cool. Was that the two in one yeah. when it was just the two of them. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was just it was just Ben and Ben and Johnny left, right? Well, that was the Darcy. And, and searching it's frantically. Yeah. Pat searching. Pat searching. <laughs> I'm slipping through my books right now. You said it was it's, in this run. It's like slow it's, Google. It's, it's, it's the new. It's, it's the new run. It's the new dance. No, no, it's a, I think it was it's the, the first current run. Second issue. Current run. Yeah. Yeah, it's the first couple issues. Yeah. The wedding and special. Just, it's before that. It's, it's yeah. It's, it's that during so that run. Yeah, issue, yeah. Written for issue four or five at the tops. It's very yeah, early, keep, yeah. Keep talking, keep talking. Slow Google's working. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, that was my backup moment. If people chose those two moments, I had nothing. <laughs> You'd have stuff. All right. Uh, I, I was going to switch it to awkward moments. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, you're Anything full of with Jessica talk. Alba in it, then that's the <laughs> yeah. awkward moment. Yeah, <laughs> Jessica Alba turning invisible and having to be naked. Wow, that yeah. was really weird. That that's really weird. So forced, that's Every really time weird to watch so back. Yeah. It's really awkward, yeah. Every time uh, it happened, it felt forced. Uh, I'm going to go, so... Um, I'm not putting things junk on the screen. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> God, I gotta get my rocks How off. How do you found that picture so fast? <laughs> oh, um, okay. Rob will have to share his wallpaper with us another day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go, so I, I listen to this whole entire podcast, I've always said, or this episode, I, I, I'm not, I don't I'm have pretty impressed, of, Rob. If you've got something, I'm pretty of impressed. FF. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to go because uh, I'm going to go with uh, the movie that, that Andre thinks is probably the best of the Fantastic Four <laughs> movies, and that's The Rise of the Silver Shirt. Fabrication. <laughs> oh, um, and I'll tell you why. Okay, the movie itself is, is, is not great, obviously. We've all agreed that the, the Tim Story movies were just atrocious and horrible. However, the Fantastic Four is what made that second movie uh, – sorry, uh, Silver Surfer is what made that movie amazing. And that that's – It was cool. That scene cool. where he he comes into the uh, into Earth, goes to the atmosphere, everybody starts going crazy. Human Torch is like, "Don't worry, I got him." Races him. He, he races him, and he flies. And Norrin Rad turns around and catches him by the neck, and is holding him there, <laughs> and then races up into the uh, outside of the atmosphere, and essentially yeah. lack chokes of oxygen, him out. chokes out um, Johnny Storm. He no longer has a flame, and he just drops him like that. Like that scene. That you know, Doug Jones did an amazing um, uh, motion capture of of uh, of Norrin Rad, Silver Surfer. But that scene where he just catches him and it's like, wow! Like that, honestly, Silver Surfer made that movie uh, way better than it should have been. When he was on his board doing his thing, it looked it, it was actually really cool to see him like that. Yeah, yeah so I really the thing where he goes through the board. And yeah, he goes through the board and looks back at him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he so, flies through the building and it's, he's upside down. You're like, geez, yeah. Like, and the building is... ripples out as yeah. he just like phases through it. So, in all honesty, again, that movie is not great because we can all think, oh my God, when when uh, the thing and Johnny Storm switch powers almost, and he's like, look at me, and it was like, oh come on, <laughs> <laughs> that was great. But, but when you have Silver Surfer and just was so amazing in that movie and those scenes so i'm gonna go with that nice you you could have went with just the fantastic four uh rise of the silver surfer trailer because everything that we just said is in that trailer and it's, <laughs> that's it that's true that that honestly cool. is like if you just watch the fantastic four rise of the silver surfer trailer you're like wow this movie's going to be amazing and, and then, as we all did and then we went to the theater and saw and it and we're like what oh. the hell this is completely off Right. So if you just watch that trailer and take out the Fantastic Four, you're like, this is a dope movie. This is amazing because Silver Surfer is just flying around being awesome. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was, a, that was a really good pick. That actually was one of my picks as well for moments. Cause, but mine was just the trailer. <laughs> it's just the trailer. Well, that, that, not just the trailer. Really. The trailer. That, that's, that, all that, need, that's all you need swap. to watch. Yeah, the power swap <laughs> moment that you're talking about where they're in the kitchen and they touch each other and then it turns and throw the yeah. flames and then, oh, come on! Like, yeah. That was... That was really good. That felt really natural. It felt, it, it, it really, it really rang true to the kind of stuff that you'd read about yeah. the yeah, characters the actually time. doing in yeah. the book. What issue like, is that first? It's actually issue one of the new run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I know. I knew it was a new run. Yeah. Issue two or three. Um, okay, so now that I'm going to finish off and, and finish this podcast shortly, but uh, mine is not a surprise. Uh, another Hickman book, uh, part of the same one. It's not that far you away. Can't be Hickman again. It, it's, yeah. it's, 
It doesn't matter because this Hickman is uh, as a Hickman shill. Holy I, uh, I I really love Matt uh, Fraction. How about Matt moment. Fraction? Yeah, what? Not uh, it's it's outside of this whole situation uh, of the pandemic. Uh, uh, issue six hundred five speaks volumes to our family and our relationship and our and, and people around us. Uh, Reed Richards, uh, being as nosy as he is, uh, wants to know about the future. Um, a lot of Hickman's books are about family and looking out for each other. And a lot of it's about, you know, why this universe survived was that Reed took the sacrifice not to, you know, part of being Reed and, is, is, and why he's a good guy and not the maker is that the family keeps him grounded, whether it's his children, Sue and, and Ben. So this was just one of those reminders that, you know, yes, he's always tinkering. But one of those moments where he goes to the future and recognizes that Ben is still alive. It's, it's 2,000 years in the future and he's still kicking and he, and he theorizes that, um, yeah, it's, it's, he theorizes that when Valeria and the kids made that, that potion elixir to bring him back to, um, as a human, one week a year, it stopped his time. Like he no longer ages when he's not in human form. So he only ages that one week that he's a human. So it goes all the way to like the year 5,000 and, and beyond. And even at the end when, you know, he sits down with Ben and recognizes the sacrifice that Ben is going to do for decades ahead and what he's truly going to be one of the, you know, the, the anchors of Reed starts the future foundation, but Ben carries it on for thousands of years forward. This idea of, of being better for, for everyone in that Reed read, Reed Richards realized Future Foundation is not about him making the world a better place it, individually. It's about imparting the generation next to be better and helping those around um, as well. So that's a really powerful uh, moment where at the end, it, and it's, it's, you know, he, he sits on the couch and, and re after recognizing Ben on his deathbed and sits on the couch and brings some beers and he's like, Ben's like, don't you have to do something? He's like, nope, I'm just going to sit here and hang out with you. Do you mind if I watch, you know, boxing he's like yeah and 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 ben recognizes that moment it's like i miss you too stretch so it's you know i think before this whole situation we we all are busy and don't take time to to hang out with our family members and our friends and and this whole situation's kind of reminded us that now we see our friends and family more often and, and strengthening those relationships and and hopefully when this is all done we don't forget our friends and family and, and even reaching out to them on a regular basis to show them how much we love them and, and appreciate them and a part of our lives. So I, I think that that's what the books are about. And that's why I think all of us love the Fantastic Four. It's, it's about family and, and friends and those relationships and bonds. So um, that, you that's, haven't met my extended family then. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, you, you, you be careful what you wish for, Rob, because you opened up the pool to John and Andre and all of us. So uh, like it or not, we're going to be couch surfing at your place sooner or later. So you, you know, nothing you can do. Wait, sort of Rob, we're not in your 10? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're in my bubble. You're in you're my, my bubble five times right. two. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, my, my bubble mates. Two. Yeah, so, so I think that... Uh, Stu has think, to apply, but yeah, we're, we're bubble mates. I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm 11 or 12. I'm on the cusp. <laughs> so, uh, but I think, you know, I think we all can say that that's why the Fantastic Four is the first family and, and why we, we like them so much. So on that note, as Why we, don't you read that issue now, Stu? Just because you said it's, it. It's, 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 yeah. it's fantastic. And, 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 and Ben grows some nice facial hair, rock facial hair. So let's, let's yes. uh, so <laughs> keep that going. It's, it's a good, it it's a good read. Moss. It's really what it should be. It should be moss. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's, it's, what it should be. It's a good one. Um, <laughs> so you clean it out with a, with a pressure washer. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. 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 And use weed killer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at that yeah. facial hair. Yeah, it's it's there's some good stuff. Yeah, and and yeah, it, it, and even the few like the all the all. Anyways, I can talk more about Hickman, but that's the thing. Okay, so um, as we as we wrap up, uh, where can we find more of John and Andre on the internet? Yeah, so uh, pretty much almost all our major accounts are under Heroes World Online. So if you go on YouTube, search Heroes World Online, you're probably already watching this on YouTube. Uh, like, subscribe um, on our Facebook, Heroes World Online, usually when you search it all one word, as well as the SoundCloud. If you like the audio version of this, let me know because we do have to pay for that. So I'm not sure if we're going to renew that. Um, and, and hold on. So, Rob, I'm not putting the picture of things junk up. Get out of here. Get out of here. It's over. It's not saying I have. And then you can find me on Instagram, jho.heroesworld. Andre? 
Uh, yeah, and you can also, if you're in the uh, greater Toronto area, you can check out our brick and mortar store. We are back up and running. Uh, we are conveniently located at 8601 Warden Avenue. Uh, so drop by, come by, say hello, pick up some books or some board games, some new releases. Some Fantastic Four Hickman. Some, some toy. One Ultimate Star. Omnibuses. 100% <laughs> pick those books up. Action figure statues. We try Fantastic Four Legends. Do you have your Fantastic Four Legends on hand, Pat? Not no. the statues that Scott has in the background. Those are no longer available. But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And stuff. We all wish. We all yeah. wish. Oh, man, those are old school. Those are old school. That's great. Uh, so Andre, uh, sorry, I cut you off. Uh, what's your it's social media handle again? Ooh, it's the Ooh, look at that. Wow. Is that fantastic. Yeah. Does it have a Hemi in it? Um, yeah, it's, just, <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the best one to reach us at Heroes World Online, like John said. Okay, Rob, what about you? <clears throat> Rob got that um, thing junk watcher at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I'm on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Tyrese is a bitch. Um, <laughs> hey, yo, hold on. I'm going to call him right now. And you're in trouble, mister. Uh, at Rob Gadet uh, is at uh, Instagram and Twitter. You can find me. You can find John and I trying to riff on, usually at least once a week, usually on Tuesdays. Um, promoting the new episodes and um, lots of con <laughs> get out of uh, here, man. This is Whoa. gonna happen. <laughs> I'm gonna will it. I'm gonna no, will it into existence. That. Okay. Uh, <laughs> lots of uh, we've had lots of comments and whatnot, and, and and emails and whatnot, and private messages. So it's been good. It's been a lot of fun to get me there. Awesome, Scott. Are you? Uh, did you want people to find you on the internet, or you want to lay low? What's the what's elusive Scott episode? Hollows? I am, I am not on uh, on Instagram or Twitter because you, I, I, I old. Um, but <laughs> He's uh, on TikTok. you'll find me. Uh, <laughs> just, just look up. Scott is a freaking giant, man. Scott is on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that you'll find like me loitering nice. on, on the, uh, the, the, the Heroes World Citizen page. Uh, if you really want to come at me about something, and, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> come at me. Um, um, come at me. Uh, I, I do a podcast with a buddy called uh, Pop and Crap. P O P N C R A P. Uh, oh, okay. Available we'll wherever try, you we'll put the find. we'll try and put the link in the, in the yeah. YouTube where podcast. where can we find? Is it on is it on uh, iTunes or where do where, where do we find it? It's definitely on iTunes. I don't know where else it might be hiding. I don't take care of that part of the the show. Um, <laughs> and, and what do you guys we, talk about we, on your podcast? We, we talk about uh, pop culture uh, and primarily movies and TVs. Uh, there ends up being a lot of comic book influence on it because my co-host is somebody that I met through another comic book podcast back in the day. And um, so we, we uh, for going into uh, Infinity War, we, uh, we did that thing where you rewatch all the Marvel movies. And so once nice. a month, we had, we had Book of the Month Club, which was watch the, the next four movies in the series as you worked your way forwards. And I think it broke my co-host. I don't think he ever wants to watch <laughs> a Marvel movie yeah. again after it's that. It's crazy. Uh, it, was, it was now. pretty intense and it felt a lot like homework. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a, uh, we do uh, uh, a sort of chitter chatter. They, the, the premise being that it's kind of um, ridiculous to apply quantitative values to qualitative experiences because at the end of the day, it's all just pop and crap. So try not to get your panties in too big of a knot while you're arguing about this stuff. But and that's that goes against why everything we learned as comic book fans. Yeah. That's, that's, that's why we don't have Andre, Andre on for the Star Wars episodes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. When, when does, uh, too much frothing. <laughs> when, does, when, do they, when do they usually come out, Scott, your podcast? What day well, is we, it monthly or what is it? You said we monthly. were weekly. Uh, we've been uh, we've fallen off our game a little bit. We we have a little issue with trying to find recording windows. Uh, he's got kids, and so we were trying to do it in the evening after we put them to bed, and then that got later and later. And so we'd start recording at like ten thirty, and wrap at like one one thirty in the Ooh. morning, and that's just painful on a work night. Again, I old now, so that hurts. Um, so we've been trying to find other ways to do it. It's really ridiculous that we get into this kind of period in our lives and the one thing that I can do, that I can do exactly the same as I've been doing it all along is the one thing I'm not doing, which is sitting down and recording like this. So we need to, we need to do more. Um, but, May I recommend uh, Zoom? <laughs> like, yes. Like this, yes, right? That, uh, yeah. that, that was our problem with the, the previous Heroes Little podcast, getting together physically. Yeah, but it's, we were never physically connected. He's in Guelph. We haven't been in the same room since we started the podcast three years ago. Ooh, wow. Um, 
we had a couple of chats beforehand and said we should do something more often. So we started doing, it was over Skype, we just do audio. Nice. And, um, and we have yet to physically be same place, same time since then, which is kind of funny to me. <laughs> there, there are no photos of us standing in the same room together since we started recording it. Are there two of them? <laughs> this, this might be a ventriloquist situation. So uh, we, need, we need a proof of life that you both exist. Yeah, uh, it's just, it's trying to get the, uh, the time into to the schedules because he's got the kids all day now. And so yeah. it's got to be after they go to bed. And once the kids go to bed, we're trying to wrap up here and juggle a weird dog. And <laughs> if I'm up late, it disturbs the house. And, or I get drunk and fall asleep in the middle of the call. That's, that's a fun way to listen to the show. It's <laughs> listen to the part where Scott falls asleep in the middle of the episode. <laughs> falls out of his chair. I look forward to listening to your podcast uh, <laughs> and figure out when you sleep. Pat. I try to stay off of the Instagram and the Twitter because I feel like if I'm on it, I would never be off my phone. You, you can find this guy in the store also All busting my chops physically yes. in person, whereas Rob assaults me on the internet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Pat can typically be found on Wednesday until he, nights. Yeah, until, uh, until maybe store. Rob goes so, back to work. Uh, and then maybe we'll coordinate. Yeah. You can see yeah. double chop busters yeah. in the store. <laughs> So uh, as we wrap up, yes, uh, please uh, support your local stores. Uh, go in, buy something, uh, social distance, of course, uh, and, and support your local store. If you're in the GTA, uh, John and Andre, uh, go to uh, Heroes World or buy something through via snail mail. They're, again, they, they will facilitate that as well. So we whatever ship, means- We can ship to you. They can ship to you. So uh, hopefully as things kind of progress back, you'll see Pat or myself on Wednesday nights uh, as I watch them play Transformers, the collectible card game, and uh, we'll see everyone in the future. So on that note, hopefully everyone's having a, a, a good time, a fantastic day. Huh? Huh? And, fantastic. Uh, That's the fantastic. Thing. And I want to thank you all for, for staying with us for this very long podcast. And uh, I hope you all have a, a wonderful day. Uh, have a good one. Bye, everyone. Right. Thanks, everybody. See you. Oh, Galactus. I'm, I'm hungry. hungry. <laughs> Look at this.